What's up, everybody? Welcome, 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 one and all, to the webinar. My name is Bradley Sutton. I'm the director of training here at Helium 10. And this is 22 product research strategies for 2022. Um, but I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, guys. Spoiler alert. When we were putting this together, we actually came up with more than 22. So we're going to go above and beyond. We're going to have uh, almost 30 strategies, actually. But uh, we're going to get to exactly what those are later. But I just want to kind of like see where everybody's at here. So if you guys can like throw, make sure you guys can see and hear me. Uh, throw in one of the chats um, where you guys are calling in from or watching in from. Uh, be awesome to know. And I'm going to give you guys some shout outs. We got Germany in the house. We've got Turkey. What's up? Sun gifts from Chicago. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Some here says, is this pre-recorded? No, this is not pre-recorded. We are live. If you're watching this right now, you're live. If you guys can fo fast forward and rewind, then you're probably not live. Um, another Germany in the house. We got Canada. We've got India. Uh, Philippines. What's up? Anambalita. Pakistan in the house. What's going on? Jamaica. Awesome. Canada. What's going on? We got Germany all over the place here. I think they know we got somebody from Germany on the show later on today. We got Abu Dhabi, Egypt in the house. What's going on? New Zealand. Uh, so as always, we have a great international flavor here. And that's the beauty about Amazon. If you guys are brand new to Amazon, you can live anywhere in the world and you could sell in Amazon USA, selling Amazon Germany. We got a lot of people from Germany here and that's the beauty here. So just speaking of that, uh, just out of curiosity, I wanna know where everybody's at. So first of all, regardless of where you're at in your journey, uh, you're gonna be able to get some value out of today's uh, workshop. But I'm just wondering, um, are you brand new, like never have sold a product uh, on Amazon before? Um, are you looking for like, your second product, like maybe you just recently launched and now you're like, hey, I'm ready to go find another product. Or are you like a experienced veteran on here? Let me know in the chat where you uh, where you guys are at so um, I can kind of have a, a an idea of how long you guys have been on here. So we see a, a couple here says brand new, never sold a, a product. By the way, if this is you, uh, like I said, everybody's going to get value today. People like Pradnya uh, are going to get the most value. So if you have never sold a product on Amazon, this uh, workshop is for you. But if you are a veteran, let me see, are there any other veterans here? Let me see. I, I see a lot of brand new people. I love this. You guys are, this is this is who we made the workshop for, especially. Christian as well. Um, let me see. Is there any like experience here? I love it. Not many experience. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, we got we got uh, Mr. and Mrs. Yu here who's experienced. We got Berta selling four products. Don't, don't go away. <laughs> You're going to get value out of this workshop too because... That's the thing about product research is it applies to somebody who's looking for their first product or maybe you've got 30 products to sell on Amazon. And what do you want? You want to know where am I going to find my 31st product, right? That's what we're going to be going over today. Now, I'm going to have different people helping me out with this workshop. And what I'm going to ask them uh, a question, each of them in the beginning, and I'm going to do it myself now, is just give like your 30 second Amazon story because I see there's a lot of new people here. I guarantee all of you pro probably come from different backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, different jobs in the past. And that's a, a, something that's great about Amazon. You could come from anywhere in the world, from any social status, any economic status, and you can come and sell on Amazon without any like prerequisites as far as education or, or you know huge bank accounts or things like that. We all have different places that we come from. So for me personally, my 30 second Amazon story is back in 2015 and 2016, I guess started learning about Amazon, didn't know too much. And then I just dedicated myself to learning. I, I joined what was then called the Illuminati Mastermind, uh, which is now called Helium 10 Elite, S dedicated myself to learning. I became a consultant for Amazon sellers helped launch over 400 products for other people. Then I got hired here at Helium 10, and now I'm the director of training and chief evangelist here. And then after I started working at Helium 10, I actually started my own Amazon businesses on the side. And I spend about you know five hours a week on these, and I gross over a million dollars a month, a month, I wish. <laughs> a million uh, rupees a month maybe, but a million dollars a year on Amazon. Uh, so I definitely am in the game just like you guys, I'm not, you know, some software salesman or something who's just trying to like sell you something. Um, so I, I'm in the exact space that you guys are maybe in or are about to be in. And so uh, please ask me any questions. You know, we'll have some Q and A at the end. Now, another thing that I like to do um, 
is again, just to prove the point that everybody's got an interesting story or come from unique backgrounds. Uh, so here's mine. Um, before Amazon, a um, long time ago in a previous life, I was actually a sumo wrestler. All right. So that's not everybody can say that there, there's me on the left there. I was even featured in, in an episode of MTV True Life about that. And then I'm probably the only ex sumo wrestler who then lost 80 pounds and then became an influencer in Zumba fitness with over 30 million YouTube views across different platforms. So again, we all might have weird things in our past. It doesn't matter. We can all come together and actually get into e-commerce. And that's our goal here. Now, this is going to be a different kind of webinar if you're used to it. We are not going to have one slide here. Um, there's no slideshow or anything, or there's no, uh, there's not going to be one of those things where I'm going to say, hey, we've got this, you know, $5,000 offer. No, it's 4,000. No, it's 3,000, blah, blah. No, none, none of that stuff here. Uh, I do have a, a special offer for you guys uh, at the end. So make sure to stay to the end because after that, I'm going to give you guys some bonus uh, strategies, but don't worry. It's not one of those kind of webinars where we're, we're uh, you know, going to be asking for your checkbook and sign your life away or anything. Not that. This is all about value, all about giving you guys strategies that, that you could literally implement um, today after this webinar, all right? This is stuff that is actionable strategies. And that's the point. And it's not just all about healing intent. Just out of curiosity, let me know in the chats who all is um, a heal current Helium 10, like platinum and above, or if you're not a Helium 10 member. You're actually gonna get more value out of this if you're not a Helium 10 member yet, um, because I'm, give I'm gonna give you guys tons of strategies that don't even have to do with Helium 10 here. So let me know in the comments, uh, oh my goodness, look at all these comments. We got so many people here. My window is almost uh, uh, my window is almost frozen. We got Andy, who's a platinum. Robert used to be uh, a Helium 10 member. All right, well, hey, stick around, Robert. You don't have to be a current Helium 10 member to get value out of this. Bertha just signed up for Elite. That's awesome. Uh, Raquel, platinum. Natasha, not a Helium 10 member. You're going to get a lot of value out of the strategies because you've probably not heard of most of these strategies. Um, all right, cool. We got a lot of free users in here. We got diamond users. Again, regardless if you have healing turn or not, we're going to give you guys value. Now, uh, let's go ahead and, and hop right into it. We are, uh, like I said, we're going to have 22 different strategies. And what we've done is we, we've prepared these uh, screen share videos for you to really show you, not just talk about the strategy, but actually show you how to do it. So the first three strategies that we're going to go over now is going to be uh, about black box. It's going to be about how to validate opportunity. Like we can find opportunity in so many places, but how do you take those next steps in order to know, is this really something that really makes sense to sell on Amazon. And we're going to talk uh, in this uh, another video here about how do you do a test listing when you don't have enough information to validate. So let's go ahead and show you guys these first strategies now. All right. The first thing that it's important to understand when we talk about product research uh, opportunity is what is the opposite of opportunity. And here's an example uh, collagen peptides. If you guys were to search this on your computer on page one, you would see results where it's tens of thousands of reviews, all right? So the first of all, you, you got to consider if you had a product, like let's say you were able to get your product to page one, position three or, or four right up here, and a, a buyer didn't know your brand, and, and maybe they didn't know these other brands either, but they had 100,000 reviews and 37,000 reviews and 96,000 reviews, and then they saw yours with zero or one or two reviews. Do you think they would buy your product? Probably not. And then if you were like to actually to dig in on x-ray uh, to on the same page, you would see that a lot of these products on the top of page one, they're doing like millions of dollars a month. You know, the, the kind of sales velocity that you would have to get to to compete with people who are doing two, three million dollars uh, a month is insane. So that's what product research opportunity is not when, when it's too competitive like that. All right. So uh, the first method then is in black box. You can go to black box for products. This is probably the the way that people are looking for product research on Amazon. Probably the most common way I would say. And and here I just did a sample search in the patio lawn and garden where I'm looking for products that making at least seventy five hundred dollars a month between twenty and forty dollars, and then a review count maximum of seventy. All right. So so the the thought process here is that if it's less than seventy reviews, it's still making like seventy five hundred dollars a month. 
they're probably not all like collagen peptides where there's just thousands and thousands of reviews and just tons of competition, right? And um, I, I put a variation count max one. And if you scroll down here, you'll see some things that might not seem to make too much sense, like wheelbarrow. But then I came across this product here, a moss pole. I have no idea what the heck this is, but it is grossing $9,000 a month, right? Now, if I were to look on this on Amazon, I, I could see why it came up, all right? It's, it's doing that... Uh, $10,000 revenue about, but look at this only got seven ratings. All right. Brand new product that's been around just a little bit. So this is just the way you can find different product ideas. Now, the thing is that you need to validate this and regardless of how you do your product research, validation is a key. So that's like the next uh, product research strategy that we're going to talk about. Number two here is how to validate uh, your product research, because you can find products a variety of ways, but how do you know if it's good or not? How do you vet it, right? Well, I'm going to click on keywords right here on the page, and that's going to open up Cerebro and, and show me all of the keywords that this product is ranking for. Because yes, maybe I can compete on a one-to-one -one basis, 1v1 one -one with that product, but I don't really know uh, overall how I can compete uh, you know, on the different keywords. So I look here and I can see that it is the, the sixth organic rank on the keyword Moss Pole that has 31,000 searches a month. So 30,000 searches a month and they're at the very top of the page, I would say they're definitely getting a lot of sales from that keyword. So then what I would do is I would actually look at it on Amazon, Moss Pole, and then just take a look here. Um, first of all, Moss Poles, guys, if, you, if you're not seeing this, it looks like corn dogs. I don't even know what this product is. But um, I'm looking at this and I do see a few here that have thousands of reviews. There's one here on the top of page one that only has got 70. Um, if I scroll down here, I could see a few. There's one that's only has seven, one that has a hundred, one that has, uh, another one that has a hundred. But the, the point is I'm looking at who else I'm going to compete with, because if I find one product that seems to have good indication, I'm not just competing with that. I got to look at the niche as a whole. Now, here's the thing. What if you're, uh, doing, uh, something, this is going to be, uh, strategy number three, by the way, what if you're looking at something that there is not a lot of competitors, like there is, there is here for Moss Pole. like what we did in project X, uh, this case study that we did a while back was we were looking at egg tray, right? And then we noticed that if you look at the egg tray results on Amazon, they're all like plastic and ceramic and things like that. But we noticed that there might be demand for wooden egg trays. So, but we weren't sure, like there wasn't a lot of wooden egg trays out there. So what we can do in this case is make what's called a PPC test listing. All right. So this is only when you have like almost no data to validate your idea. This is how you can validate kind of newish ideas. So the, the idea was that, Hey, maybe it's just a matter that nobody sees wooden egg trays on this egg tray search, but if they just saw it here on page one, they would get it. So what you can do is you would go into your Amazon advertising. You'd get like a few from Etsy or, or some, you know, uh, other manufacturer, you can get like five or 10 units. And then you would make a fixed bid PPC campaign. That's really high to get you at that top position. All right. And then you would put your product there and then put the keywords that you think would be relevant to your product, but you don't know because there's nobody else doing what you're trying to do. And then you would put a really high bid here to make sure you're at page one, position one. And then you you would show up at the beginning here with a wooden egg tray uh, with zero reviews probably because it's a brand new product. And then you would just look at the data. Are people clicking on it? Are people buying it at a high price? And if so, that would kind of validate your idea that, hey, yes, you are relevant for those keywords. All right. So we've done three down. We've got 19 plus more to go. What was your favorite strategy there? So the first one is probably the basic one that I think everybody you know knows about, right? It's like, hey, I, I want to find a product to sell on Amazon. It's got X and Y characteristics that tend to show me that there could be some opportunity there. All right. So I think that's what people have been doing for years. We're going to, we, we want to start with the stuff that you guys are mainly aware of and then expand out to give you guys other strategies. But point number two was important because you can find products to sell on Amazon through a number of ways. We're going to show you over 22 ways today, but how do you like take that step, uh, second and third step in order to see, Hey, can I really compete here? Can I make money? That's important that you guys can do. We're going to show you guys some strategies today that may, that kind of like even are faster than Amazon. Like you might not even see it on Amazon. You might see some opportunity somewhere else. Like on Etsy, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Pinterest. And But then if you find opportunities somewhere off of Amazon, 
how do you even know how to validate it if there's nothing on Amazon to really validate, right? Well, that's where you use that third strategy that we talked about, which is using a PPC test listing in order to gather some data. We talked about that in Project X. All right, real quick, now that uh, we have a lot of people on here, go ahead and take, take a selfie of yourself. We always like doing this. Take a selfie of yourself watching this uh, broadcast or a picture of your computer or something. Put it on your Instagram, all right? Put it on your Instagram and find Helium 10 software, all right? Give Helium 10 software a uh, follow and then tag Helium 10 software. You can also tag me if you want, H10 Bradley. I am on Instagram, H10 Bradley. Tag us both and we'll repost it to ours. Um, another thing, you notice this shirt I'm wearing, Serious Sellers Podcast, all right? This webinar, as you guys can see, is completely free. You know, nobody had to pay to sign up. If you guys like free education, Absolutely, guys, take your phone out right now, and if you have a, uh, an iPhone, go to Apple Podcasts and look up Serious Sellers Podcast and give it a follow, all right? It's the most listened to podcast in the world for Amazon sellers with over 80,000 monthly downloads. If you're on an Android or you don't have Apple Podcasts app, go to Spotify, look up Serious Sellers Podcast. Don't start listening to it right now, but hit the follow or the subscribe button so that after this, you can get more actionable information. Today's episode that just dropped um, is about a website that you can source and do product research on, all right? This is not even going to be one of the top 26 strategies because I knew this episode was going to drop today. How many people here have never heard of the website ewugo.com? I didn't hear about it. I was like last week years old when I found out about that website. That's what today's episode is. So if you guys want to continue your education today, Follow the podcast after this is over. Go listen to that episode that just dropped today about ewugo.com, a, a website that probably is new to most of you guys. All right. Now, it's not going to be just the Bradley Show today. I've got an amazing team here at Helium 10, and they've prepared some of their best product research strategies. Now, how we're going to do it, everybody's remote here at Helium 10. We're going to take a quick plane ride right now to our next guest. All right. What's up, Shivali? How's it going today? It's going good. How are you, Bradley? I'm doing just delightful. Thank you. So one thing I want, uh, I, I started off, I don't know if you saw, but I did like uh, my, my 30 second Amazon story. And that's a cool thing about my team here is everybody's got experience on Amazon. So Shivali, what's your 30 second Amazon story? For sure. So a few years ago, I thought I was going to go into medicine. I thought I was going to become a cardiothoracic surgeon or a psychiatrist or something. And uh, I was taking my medical school prerequisite courses, and I realized that, you know what, this isn't necessarily going to give me the lifestyle that I want to live as much as I love medicine. So I started exploring my options, and I was taking a look at several e-commerce options because I know I, it, it provides that lifestyle of being able to travel and still make money from wherever you are, right? So I tried my hand at a few things, and long story short, I ended up publishing books on Kindle and selling on Amazon. So fast forward to today, I'm very, I haven't looked back since, and naturally it just made sense to take a job here at Helium 10 as well, just because I love the Amazon space and I love being able to connect with everybody that's in it as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome to the show. Um, uh, I also get like to give a couple, you know, random facts about people. And so what I did was I scoured everybody's Instagram accounts and pulled like some pictures here. So oh, actually, you know, uh, you think I, I, I'm a celebrity for being on True Life. No, no, no. We got a true celebrity here. Shivali was actually Miss Supranational USA. That's like Miss USA, like Miss America, you know, for a different competition. And she represented the USA in 2021 in Poland at the world, you know, like Miss Supernational World, I think it's called. But yeah, so uh, we've got a celebrity <laughs> here, uh, here at uh, Helium Definitely 10. Not. That's awesome. Now, Shivali, you're actually, you, you've got three strategies here. And if I'm not mistaken, none of them are really finding opportunity on the, the traditional Amazon, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think oftentimes we think about, you know, selling on Amazon and we get, we, we put ourselves in this box of only finding products on Amazon, but that's not always, that doesn't have to be the case, right? You can find products all around you. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the strategies where you can use third-party sites that maybe you're already surfing, like Etsy and Pinterest, uh, to find product opportunities or things that you might be interested in selling, as well as a strategy that you can use if, let's say, you don't have uh, the largest amount of capital to really invest. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and see what three strategies you've prepared for us. 
Another way to conduct product research is by utilizing Helium 10's black box tool to take a look at saturated markets. Typically, when we think of saturated markets, we think, oh, there's too much competition for me to compete, but that's not always the case. So let's consider an example. Let's say we inputted a minimum of 6,000 for search volume, 5,000 for monthly revenue, and 1,000 for review count in the keywords tab of Blackbox. Odds are you would receive a handful of products that appear to be saturated in return, one of them being crystal wine glasses. But opening up the corresponding Amazon search for that keyword, we would find most of the results are a simple standard wine glass. Sure, there's nice packaging, but none of them really stand out. Whereas, if you input the same keyword, crystal wine glasses, in Etsy, we would see a lot more versatility. Embroidered crystal wine glasses, colored ones, the same goes for Pinterest. We would see similar versatility. So, what could that mean? Even if a market appears to be saturated, you can use sites like Etsy and Pinterest to figure out how to stand out. Now, of course, Etsy and Pinterest are great resources to leverage, but they're by no means the only sites you can go to for product ideas. Alibaba is also a great starting place. For those of you who don't know, Alibaba is the largest sourcing website in the world. You can kind of think of it like the Amazon marketplace that connects sellers to suppliers. However, it's useful for more than just sourcing. So in the case you were surfing the site for ideas and you happen to stumble upon a crescent moon shelf listing, you could click the supplier's storefront to further explore your options. If you see an item that catches your interest while browsing that storefront, like maybe a storage uh, bag organizer, you would be able to open it up in a new tab, take some of those keywords, uh, and enter them into Alibaba and analyze that product opportunity's demand by running Helium 10's demand analyzer tool on it. Now, the demand analyzer tool can be found inside of the Helium 10 Chrome extension. And when you click see analysis through this, you would be able to discern top level information, like how many times on average are people searching for that product every month? Who are your top competitors? And more. So if there's high demand and it looks like something you would want to compete in, then you could move forward with trying to validate whether that product opportunity is worth your time, effort, and money with other means, such as the profitability calculator. Keep in mind that physical products don't have to be the only way that you get started on Amazon. If you don't necessarily have a hefty budget to invest the big bucks into private label from the get-go, you can always start with something digital like Kindle Direct Publishing that has little to no investment capital required. And there are many ways to find niches you can compete in. To list a few, you could use Blackbox to filter for books and any additional parameters that uh, would help you find an in-demand niche that has a listing you could possibly do better. For instance, the 75 Hard Challenge book is searched for upwards of 3,000 times on average every month. And opening up that keyword on Amazon, you would see a handful of listings with lower uh, reviews. Now, of course, on this page could be maybe a listing that you feel you could do better. You could see a listing with a book cover you might be able to repurpose better a description section you could optimize, or even reviews that you would be able to leverage to either write a better book or have a ghostwriter write better content for you. You could also navigate to the Kindle store using the drop-down menu next to the search bar on Amazon, and then further niche down using the subcategories on the left-hand paneling to surf the superstore to find a Kindle space you feel comfortable and confident entering. All right. So we had there, what were the three here? We had uh, Etsy, Pinterest, and also KDP. Um, if I if I were to estimate or to guess what your favorite was, I would assume KDP since you've actually, you actually are a KDP author. Would I be right there? Yeah, you would. You would. I think it's really cool that, you know, people can get started with little to no investment capital. It's a great place to, you know, dip your feet into the Amazon space without, uh, going full speed, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Now, if you remember the, the, the Etsy and Pinterest one was actually something we talked about in project X. Now project X is this thing that we did on YouTube, showing people how to find 
product uh, opportunity and actually launch it. But, you know, so this is a couple years back. But Shivali, do you remember why Tim, Tim Jordan and I said that uh, sometimes Etsy and Pinterest, you can... I don't want to give it away here with my question, but like you can why find products that are trending? Yeah, trend, uh, or like why was it trend. ahead of Amazon? Like it, why? It why gets, do you remember like why why you can actually find stuff on Etsy and Pinterest beforehand? Isn't it because uh, it pulls from Google as well? Just what people are searching for. Yeah, exactly. Searching. You see, you know, when when we talk about Amazon, right? People, you know, if you see a product on Amazon, like like Shivali, when you made your product on Amazon. From the time that you thought of the product, and then you you know you got it made and everything, and it was actually selling on Amazon. What, what was that time period like? Like was My, it uh, two weeks later? Yeah, it was. It was actually much longer for me. But yeah, it's uh, months, right? Like yeah, I was, it was, what, four it was months, months? Five months. Yeah, yeah, I actually ended up having uh, you know Seller Central some issues with it, but. Pinterest and Etsy, if I'd started there, I think it would have been a completely, uh, it would have been perfect because it's ahead of, it's exactly. ahead by months. Exactly. And so the reason is because of what Shivali just said, it took her, you know, and, and, and any of you, any of you, you, I know there's a lot of you guys here who said you were brand new and then I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer or something. This is just reality. If you're making your product in China, You've got to get it made, which takes like a month. Maybe you you had a month that you're going through getting samples and stuff. This is totally normal. This is the way you make products. And then it takes like a month or maybe two months to get here. It takes a while to get to Amazon. We're talking maybe six months from the time you had your original idea. But et Etsy sellers, Shivali, are Etsy sellers getting their products made in China for the most part? Uh, yeah, they, they definitely can. They could. But if I'm they selling on Etsy... To. I'm gonna, to. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna make it myself, you know, in my garage. A lot of people now, Pinterest. That's not even you can't even buy from that. That's just ideas, right? So if I have an idea and I want to put it on Pinterest, Shivali, how long does it take me to get it on Pinterest? No, it's an idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, Instantly, it's, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I had this idea. Let me. I don't. I'm not a Pinterest user. What do you call it? Pin, pin it or pin, something like. Yeah, pin, pin it, it to my wall it. or yeah. something yeah. like that, right? Things to, yes. Yeah. So if if I if I have an idea on Pinterest, it's there like the next day. So if I have that same idea and it's only going to be on Amazon, it's like months and months and months like it took Shivali to do, guys. So you can sometimes see things on Pinterest and Etsy that you could have months before you can see it trending on Amazon. So that strategy, guys, uh, you know, when you guys get this replay, go back to what Shivali said about looking for opportunity on there because that is super, super key to get ahead of the game on that platform. So thank you so much, Shivali, thank for you. your help on this. Let's go and take another plane ride. Not a plane ride. Let's go. No, I, I wanted to go to Lem first. Lem is waiting to get on. Let's not take a plane ride. Let's actually go into one of my strategies right here. So I'm going to give a strategy and then we'll take another plane ride. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So I am at the Helium 10 office working today and I'm in what is the tequila room. Okay, so here, here I am. Let me just show you guys. Here's our entire office here. Uh, we got a few people working out of here today. We actually work from home normally, but every couple Thursdays we come in here. Anyways, I want to show you guys just how you can just like look around your surroundings to get product ideas. And this is not something that, hey, no matter what room in your house you're going to go to, you're going to find product opportunity. But I just want to teach you how to even like look at things in order to know, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some things that we see here. So here's like um, something interesting, like a, like a metal wire, like a wire globe, okay? We've got um, a stainless steel, I'm assuming this is for ice. Here, here's a, a wide, a wider, like a rectangular succulent planter. Here's maybe a, a tray for wine glasses, perhaps. A little astronaut minifig. Um, geometric shape, maybe I'd call this. I think these are called like tumblers or something like that. So stainless steel tumbler. Ah, oh, look at this one. I like this. This looks really interesting. This is a, a shot glass tray with cut out for salt or something that is actually a pretty cool product right there it's this <laughs> this is like a, a wooden here it is, home decor white sand collection hobby lobby so this is from hobby lobby but it's like a wooden fake decor wine bottle i don't know what keyword that would be 
in the office. Now, granted, this is an interest room because it's a tequila room, but what you would do is, is like write down some of these things and then you go into Helium 10 and look for the search volume. You look on Amazon what the main keywords are and things like that and you can get some interesting ideas. Let's go ahead and hop into Helium 10 now and do that. All right, so the first step uh, on one of these, I'm not gonna do all of those ones that I saw, but uh, let me just start here, globe. You know, I didn't know what the main keyword is. So if you don't know what the main keyword is, just throw it into magnet, like what a seed keyword in it. You know, I knew that wire globe was metal and it was a globe, right? So I put in globe here and then I put in a filter that says, hey, show me the phrases that contain metal and globe. And sure enough here, um, I saw metal world globe. Now, only 250 search volume, so it didn't really seem like it might be much. But then I just checked here on Amazon and, and sure enough, you know, most of the stuff that comes for metal globe is not it. Now, if you remember, there was also a stainless steel ice bucket. Now that one, I just entered directly into Amazon and I can see using x-ray, it had 840 search volume. And then there was one here that is selling like $80,000 a month. So I'm like, Hmm, this might be interesting. Again, this doesn't mean it's opportunity, but I want to see, well, what Obviously, they're not getting all of their sales, right, from a keyword that only has 800 search volume. So when I click in to Cerebro here, I could see some of the keywords where it's ranking uh, in the top five or 10 that have over a thousand search volume. And then you could see some keywords here like Ice Bucket that has 40,000 searches. And so if I were to actually search for uh, Ice Bucket for a cocktail bar, for example, I could definitely see a lot of products that were similar to the one that we have in the tequila room. Um, again, this might not be necessarily opportunity because when I look here, I can see it has thousands of reviews. But again, I was able within just like a minute to find the kind of keywords that drive sales to that product that I saw. Now, uh, another one, if you remember, was that rectangular succulent planner. Uh, sure enough, there's actually a uh, quite a number of uh, rectangular ones here and not all have uh, high reviews like there's one you know the one that has amazon's choice only has like 400 reviews here's one on page one that only has 20 reviews so so this one you know might look like the most promising one uh so far when i actually run x-ray on it i can see that you know there's a few that are are making about five to ten thousand dollars a month um now another search that uh, i did was shot glass tray you guys remember that one that looked like it had spaces for shot glasses and like um some other some other things i, I forgot what, what exactly it was but look at this i found almost the exact same product that is in our tequila room and um like this is pretty crazy it's a 50 dollars product i guarantee uh you can make this for pretty cheap in in uh, alibaba as a matter of fact like watch what happens here when i uh, after running x-ray i can actually run um uh, the demand analyzer and or supplier finder i should say and actually look on alibaba for this all right so that one was 50 dollars, right and then you could see here there are different ones here that, that these are only like four and five dollars each from alibaba.com so that one definitely looks uh very interesting and if i actually uh, looked on this page i can actually see it says here it's amazon's choice for another keyword tequila board and then if i looked on tequila board i can see other unique products that again I i'm just going down a rabbit trail here it all started just by me looking at something in our tequila room and i came across like a few different keywords that look like it might have uh opportunity here so um again the point is look around your house look around daily life and start writing down what you think they are and then just start going down these rabbit trails and you might find something cool like a tequila board that sells for 50 bucks that you can probably get for five dollars from china all right so I want to change how you guys just go about your daily life, you know, and, and some people get mad at me when I do this because now they say, Bradley, you ruined my life because now everywhere I go, I, all I'm thinking about is, can I sell that on Amazon? Can I sell that on Amazon? Ooh, look at this. Can I sell? And you're going to start to annoy your friends and family and stuff. But hey, guys, this is the life of an entrepreneur. So that had nothing to do with software, at least the first part of it. You know, it had nothing to do with healing 10. It didn't even have anything to do with Amazon.com. But my point with that strategy was. In your own house, when you're at somebody else's house, when you're at the store. I mean, I remember I was um, at an ice cream shop 
in the Dominican Republic and I saw an idea for a, a, a product. It, it was like a, one of those little things where you can put the ice cream cones in. You're going to just, your eyes are going to start to be opened at, at unique products. Now I'm not saying, Hey, you know, go look at the uh, collagen peptides or a garlic press or something like that. You know, that might be saturated, but keep your eye open for unique products. Like you remember that one? I did that video uh, live, not live today, but I mean, I just, I just like was recording myself and, and I was like, Whoa, this is a cool product. That one that had the tequila shot glasses and a space for the, the lime and the salt and stuff. And sure enough, that actually turned out to be something that looked pretty interesting. Like that would be an amazing Christmas gift, uh, kind of product. So you never know where you can get the inspiration. Now I told you before, I was like all excited to go see my brother from another mother Lem. Let's go ahead and take a plane ride to him now. All right, live from Indiana. Lem, how's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing awesome. Now, Lem, same thing to start off with you. What's your 30-second Amazon story? Well, yeah. Well, for me, I started off as a broke college student, as many people do, um, and was just looking for a way to make money and learned that I could flip stuff online and then I could actually be go on Amazon. So since then, got my toes um, deep into that and have worked for wholesale e-commerce companies, managing ad spend over a million dollars, getting ad sales over $10 million. And after that, pursued entrepreneurship full-time on my own, doing a blend of consulting, retail arbitrage, and private label. And then it was just only natural that I come into Helium 10, and I'm loving it so far. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're loving having you here for sure. Now, again, uh, I was just looking for pictures, and here we go. Here is Lem's interesting facts about him. He was actually a Division One volleyball player uh, at Ball State, I believe. And mm -hmm. uh, here uh, he's just spreading COVID to everybody with with his, you know, right up there in everybody's <laughs> face. But um, I'm assuming this was actually before COVID. So th this yes, was okay, it was. Right? It was before okay. before that. <laughs> now, there's actually not that many Division One colleges no. that have volleyball right like how many in america i would probably say about 40 to 50 so wow that's crazy you know like, like yeah. for basketball there's more than 100 uh like 200 yes. if i'm not mistaken so wow that's pretty cool so we got a bona fide volleyball superstar here but anyways we're not here to talk about your sports career we're here mm -hmm. to talk about your strategies now um any of these strategies have you did you ever use this uh in your amazon sellings I definitely use uh, variations of them, but for me, my Amazon selling, especially since I have a good, decent amount of retail arbitrage, one of the things that we'll be talking about, I definitely utilized in my uh, experience. Okay, excellent. Well, without further ado, let's get into the strategy. We are now in uh, strategies uh, eight, nine, and 10. So let's go ahead and see what you prepared for us. All right, let's dive right into our product research strategy. So our very first one is finding arbitrage items being sold that are considered to be oversized or large sizes. So then they are shipped for FBM and can be drop shipped. So we're gonna utilize black box within a products tab for this. And obviously we wanna look at one with decent monthly revenue and one that has that are, are labeled for large or special oversized. And we wanna make sure that we look for a minimum of four sellers in this listing to ensure that we find an arbitrage listing. So as we scroll through our results, we find one that's a barbecue gas grill being sold for around $2,349 with about 56 sales a month. So luckily, if we go to the listing, the title has the model number in it. So it'll be really easy for us to Google and see if it's being sold anywhere else for cheaper. So simple Google search is gonna already show us that it's being sold on a website for $1,399. If I click into this website, I see that it's even offering free shipping. Are you kidding me? So let's see how that figure works out for us. If we go back to our listing and look within our profitability calculator. Now our only cost here is the cost of the product, which is again, $1,000, and any Amazon fee. So when you put that in with the price point of, being, of it being sold at $2,349, we were left with a profit of almost $600 each, which a 25% margin. Holy smokes, that's awesome. This listing only has six sellers, so definitely an opportunity to make some money here. So moving on, so we'll move on right to our second strategy, which also uses black box, but within the keywords tab this time. 
Here, we are mainly just looking for keywords that provide us with a low barrier of entry where we can be competitive and build some decent sales. So with that in mind, we'll have to make sure that our filters account for a high search volume with a moderate price point and where the average review count isn't too high, like 100. We want to make sure that we exclude single word keywords as well. So we're going to look in a random category like tools and home improvement. And so let's go ahead and scroll through these keywords. Okay, we found a keyword. It says laser pointer high power, which has over 14,000 search volume and an average price point of $23. All right, that's great. With around 500 monthly sales and an average reviews of 32 per listing. Whoa, let's dive deeper into this. So upon searching this into Amazon, we can see in the search results that this indeed does have exactly what the filter said it would around that price point, same underneath that review count of 100. This looks good. So let's go ahead and deploy X-Ray to make sure that we can find a random keyword to then put into Cerebro. Again, we're solely just looking for uh, within this ASIN, a keywords that have good search volume that appear at the top of page one. So we're going to just look at this random ASIN and pop, pop into Cerebro. So in Cerebro, we're going to try to find, again, like I said, top keywords that have high search volume that appear on the top of page one. So within this within the set of keywords that are being shown, we see one that's the highest of them all, green laser pointer with over 17,000 search volume. Now, when we search this keyword, we see the same type of uh, things that we saw before with listings around a $20 price point below 100 reviews. Now, this is definitely something that would indicate opportunity. Now, lastly, for a non Amazon strategy, we move on to Etsy. Yes, that's right. Etsy. We're going to be looking for top selling items within random categories and search queries on Etsy. So, for instance, we're going to search the word storage. Super broad. I know stores that's where we're going to be looking for and on etsy to find try to find a product with the best seller badge attached to it now we're coming across a product that's called a zipper bag organizer with a hinged lid it essentially seems to be a wooden box with openings to place plastic ziploc bags with different size openings depending on the baggie so like a quart size bag a sandwich bag a snack bag or even like a gallon ziploc bag all right that's pretty cool that's pretty clever so let's dive deeper into this on the listing, it says that the it is a bestseller. Because again, we're looking for listings that say bestseller. But how do we confirm that this is the main item that's selling like crazy for this specific Etsy seller? Now, believe it or not, it truly is as easy as just clicking on the seller's name on the listing, which appears in big letters above the product title, which we're gonna do right now, and then go directly and click on the number of sales that they have underneath their seller profile. In this specific case, this seller profile says it made 954 sales, but let's see how many of those appear to be this zipper bag organizer. Guys, you can't see this, but practically all of the previous sales made here are of this zipper bag organizer. Holy smokes, on Etsy, on Etsy. So imagine how this would do on Amazon. All right, Lem, I got two words for you. Holy smokes. <laughs> Lem is about to make a, a new catchphrase here. Like, I got my, how cool is that? Lem's got his holy smokes. All right. Um, it's really cool. Uh, what, what, you know, the, those, those things that you mm -hmm. mentioned, especially the arbitrage, because when, when you do arbitrage, you got to be careful. You know, you got to make sure yeah. obviously you got the right part number and mm -hmm. everything and that it's not some kind of gated thing. But but you could see the potential there, guys, that, you know, you could, you know, just sell something, buy it from another website and then drop ship it. Um, and, you know, it can it can make you a lot of money right there. Now, um, one question I have for you is on Etsy. You know, we talked a little bit mm -hmm. about this with uh, Shivali, but um, do you remember where we got the products for our Tesla scene uh, that we did in Project X. Yeah, I believe you got it from Etsy. Like you started, yeah, we got it from Etsy. from Etsy. Yeah. So that's a that's a. If, if any of you guys are trying to do something brand new that that you know is not out there, and so you do want to test it out, just to like try, like, hey, can I get clicks, guys? Uh, instead of having to go and and have somebody make you know like ten samples, which costs an arm and a leg and takes a lot of time, uh, go to Etsy and and see. And I really love that hack that that Lem gave about seeing which ones are the top sellers. Now, Lem, when you were uh, looking at that, mm -hmm. does every single seller have that available, like where you can see their sales? Yeah, on Etsy, practically every seller has that available. So you can get that, a really clear idea of what products are the best selling for each seller. Yeah, so for every seller, guys, look at that number. 
I, I think there was one that, that he had was like 623 or something like that. And mm -hmm. the 1,000, you can see if it's one of the top sellers out there. Um, if, if it's probably like five or six, they only have that number five or six, then probably it's not worth mentioning. Um, what Lem showed was he actually took it a step further. He actually clicked on that sales number and then looked into um, ex their orders on a product level. And guys, mm -hmm. every order that was on that screen there, if you guys saw it, that's every single order that they have made. So you can see what are the top sellers. However, not everybody can you click everybody you can see that sales number but not everybody you can click on it so if, if mm. there's no link there's just a little hack for you guys if there's no like if you mouse over it and there's no it doesn't change that link little hand button then you can't look at it just go to another one of the top sellers but always look at that sales number like lem said so that you guys can see all mm. right thank you so much lem for yep. that strategy now um Lem talked a little bit about arbitrage so let me show you guys another way that you can do kind of arbitrage on the go with this next one Retail arbitrage can get you money sometimes before you're ready to do a private label product by allowing you to start small. So how would you do retail arbitrage? You basically got to look in the stores for clearance items or things that you can get for cheap that are going for more on Amazon. If you want to see what kind of activity is happening on Amazon, uh, what price it's selling for, something you see in a store, just pull it out and then scan the barcode with the Helium 10 mobile app. I'm gonna hit the research button here and then I hit the camera button and I'm going to want to go ahead and zoom in on this barcode and it pulls up instantly on the Helium 10 mobile app. I can see it was selling for $15, selling about 35 units a month and it even it's telling me some of the uh, top ranking keywords for it just in case I might have some private label idea uh, ideas for the future. So again, retail arbitrage is a cool method use the Helium 10 mobile app to see what's happening on Amazon for it. All right, so there we go. When you're on the go um, and you're in a store, everything in the store, guys, has a barcode. There are some things in your house. Remember I said, hey, look around the stuff in your house and it has a, bar, uh, has a barcode. Use the Helium 10 mobile app in order to scan that barcode and get some information on how much it's selling on Amazon. So when you're in the store, the benefit is like, let's say you see something in the clearance aisle, right? And you scan it, you can see, hey, this is going for like $50 on Amazon right now, but it's on clearance right now for 20 Oh, I've done that before. I'll just go buy up a whole bunch of items and then put it on Amazon to sell. So that's another one of those ways where if you're brand new and you're like, man, you know, I, I need to come up with like $2,000 or $4,000 to get this product I want to do. I don't have that kind of money yet. This is just one of those ways where you can build up. Uh, your money on Amazon by doing some arbitrage and using the Helium 10 mobile app to help you. All right, guys, let me know real quick. Uh, what is your favorite strategy so far? Do you, have you guys been counting? That was number 11. All right. So that means that what we are halfway through the top 22. Don't forget to stay to the end. We've got 11 more plus some bonus ones for you guys as well. So let me know in the chat, which ones are your, are your favorite ones uh, so far? Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. We got uh, Talha says number 10. So Talha says that. That was uh, top of mind for her. All right. What else do we got here, guys? I know there's like a little bit of a delay here. Let me know in the chat which ones you guys like uh, the best. My favorite one, I might have to go with that Etsy one, looking at the sales. That's really crazy. You can't even, you can't even do that on Amazon. You, I mean, you you have an idea with Helium 10, like what are the top sellers, but you don't know exactly. Like you can't see order by order, every single order that Amazon sellers are getting, but on Etsy, you can. Um, uh, Ahmed uh, remind, uh, agrees with me. He likes that one. Excellent. Denise likes the analyzer tool. Awesome. Uh, Drea like the uh, PPC test. Irene like the Etsy too. Odrazo like Shivali's one about checking on Pinterest. Excellent. All right, cool. Don't forget, guys, if you hopped in later, you're going to be able to watch this on the replay if you missed any of these. Uh, right about now, it's time to take another plane trip. Let's go international. All right, we've got Adriana in the house. How's it going from Monterrey, Mexico? Hi, Bradley. Hola a todos. All right. Adriana is our new uh, brand evangelist here for the Latin American market, um, Spain and all of South America, uh, Mexico, Central America. You're going to start seeing a lot of content from her in the Spanish language. I mean, before it used to have to be me trying to like 
my, with my terrible Spanish trying to do videos and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 we need, we need a native speaker here. So Adriana is that, but um, Adriana real quick, what's your 30 second Amazon story? Yes, so I started selling on Amazon in 2018, and since then I have launched um, dozens of products, both in Amazon US and, and in Amazon Mexico. I like to focus on creating beautiful listings uh, that will further increase the perceived value of my products. And I recently joined the Helium 10 team over here, um, and I'm happy to continue learning strategies to find good selling products on Amazon. Awesome, awesome. All right, and for for my uh, spying on you, uh, the the things that I found that were interesting. Let me just pull up a, a picture here. I can throw up on the screen. But you were actually a a curator, I believe, for for art galleries, and you yes. were a write a writer for um for Vice, even right? Yes. How, how yes, did I the, love everything. Were you always interested in art, or how how did that happen? Yes, yes, always interested in art, and I think that that. Now in Amazon, I have that created, uh, um, I guess, opportunity to create beautiful uh, looking listings that will help me compete in Amazon. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm excited to see about your strategies. You know, we've been talking a lot about off of Amazon, but now we're going to come back on Amazon. We're going to come back into Helium 10. Like, how can we find some products that have opportunity by using Helium 10? And then also, how can we utilize a new tool that's actually from Amazon in order to get product ideas? Let's see the strategies that you prepared for us. I use black box to search for products that have a good amount of revenue, a good amount of sales coming in every month, and that have competitor products with poor quality listings. I use the filters to put in the minimum amount of monthly revenue that I'm looking for. I set the minimum and maximum price, and I, and I set the rating to a maximum of four, because we want to find low rated products that will give us an opportunity to come in and offer a better quality product. I also said, the maximum of images to four, as I want to find products that are not using all of, all of the available slots. That way I know I can, I can work on creating a listing with seven great images that will help the listing convert better. Blackbox would then give us a list of products that fit that criteria, and we can, in a matter of seconds, really find products that have only three to four images, a rating of 3.4 three or 3.5 stars, and perhaps are even lacking A plus content. This will make it easier for us to compete if we create a better looking listing offering a better quality product. Another way that I like to search for products that are in high demand is by searching for keywords that are showing an upward trend on search volume. This will, the way I would find these keywords is by using Cerebro or even Magnet to search for keywords that are, are showing this upward trend. I would find these keywords by setting the search volume trend filter minimum to 100 to find keywords whose search volume has increased at least 100%. There will, of course, be keywords that have an increase in search volume because of seasonality, such as keywords related to Halloween or Christmas, but we should only look at keywords that have this growth due to an increase in interest in these products. You can click on the graph icon on the search volume column to get a visual representation of what their growth has been like and when it started. I also like to use the Product Opportunity Explorer tool where I search for keywords to find information on how many products are getting most of the sales for that niche. The column total number of products tells us the number of products that share 80% of the niche's click share. I can sort this column, and if I find it's only five products, that means they are dominating the niche. They have 80% of all the sales in the niche. So someone might think if the listings are bad, it might be easy to get a big market share. Conversely, if it takes 200, 180, 200 plus products just to be able to cumulatively get 80% click share for that niche, you might see this as a niche that is wide open and anyone has a shot to get a share of these sales. All right. Those were another three great strategies there. I believe we are at number of my, my notes are correct here, 12, 13, and 
14. Do you have a favorite of those three that you just did, Aljana? Yes, I think black box for finding poor quality listings because, I mean, it's it's easy then to just uh, be creative and create these beautiful listings that will make the customers choose our products. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I love that because it's a really amazing when you guys actually use those filters uh, that Aljana was using you can find some products that are making tons of money on Amazon, but their listing is garbage. It's like, what in the world? Like, why are people viewing this? And so that to me is a great indication of opportunity because since she, since she had put those minimum revenue filters in, you know for a fact that these listings are selling. So if they're selling, but then the listing is garbage, like you got to ask yourself why? Well, Maybe everybody's listing is terrible in that niche. So people have to like choose that product. Well, if you come in with a great listing and you're going to have an advantage, or maybe it's that product is so unique that even though the listing is terrible, the Amazon buyer just like has no choice. They're like, well, I got to buy this product, um, which is why I have to do it. Um, so now, uh, Adriana, are you launching any products uh, uh, this year or you uh, next year is your next product launch? Well, I am already planning for next year. Um, right now, for the for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm kind of slowing down the launches because of that whole like shipping situation that's going on. But I'm already doing my research, so I'm ready for January to launch new products. Okay. Now, for everybody speaking Spanish, para todos que hablan español, tú vas a hacer esta presentación en español a lo mejor este mes, ¿verdad? Sí, exacto, Bradley. No podemos dejar a nuestra audiencia acá en Latinoamérica y en otros países sin, sin enterarse sobre estas estrategias para, para lanzar sus productos. Perfect, perfect. So we're going to have this presentation, guys, for you in Spanish, given by Adriana sometime later on this month for those uh, who are Spanish speakers out there. Anyways, thank you so much for that, Adriana. We are now at numbers 15 and 16. Let's talk about how to find product opportunity in both Market Tracker and also another arbitrage way of finding products. All right, this next strategy is using Market Tracker in Helium 10. Now, Market Tracker, as you guys know, is not a product research tool. It's actually a analytics tool. And, and what you do is if you're selling a product on, on Amazon, you, you track its market so you, think you can see your share of voice, like how much uh, percent of the niche are you getting uh, sales-wise, right? And who are the new movers and shakers? So, for example, right here, it's like saying, hey, you know what? You were not tracking this coffin shelf. Uh, you, do you want to track it? And some of these I'm going to put yes, because I definitely want to compare it to my coffin shelf. But some of these I would probably hit no because I don't consider them competitors. However, before you hit no, write down some of these because these sometimes can be great um, ideas for future product line extensions. Like here I'm tracking our coffin shelf, but this is a product I'm going to hit no, but it's a makeup coffin shelf and coffin brush set like if I have a, if I'm selling coffin shelves, that would be an interesting lion extension. I see a lot of coffin shelves here, but as I scroll down, look at this. Here's a coffin shaped felt letterboard kit. Again, not a coffin shelf, not part of my niche, but it would be an interesting expansion on my spooky coffin brand, right? Here's a coffin tray, crystal tray. Um, let's see what else. Here's a coffin key holder. Here's another coffin key holder. Here's a coffin pen holder. Here's a coffin bath tray, another coffin letter board. Um, here's coffin shaped, uh, what is this? Like uh, um, plugs for, for the wall, for like your outlets. I mean, th there's a never ending list of interesting ideas here for me to expand my own product line. So again, don't use Market Tracker just to track your niche, but use it for product ideas to expand out your brand. Uh, another thing that I like to do is I like to look at big deals for websites like Walmart or Best Buy, um, the ones that have stores near me, Staples, Walmart, Best Buy, Home Depot, things like that. Uh, for example, here, here's Walmart.com, and they, they have some early access deals uh, on things. Now, I like to go into the toy niche because in, in the past, um, in the toy niche, I've made tens of thousands of dollars on just one product. And here is one here, uh, a Barbie Estate 3-in-1 Dream Camper. Now, I actually saw this earlier. And as you can see here, it says $79. But then I also saw it in other places on the Walmart website where it's $10.99. That's crazy, $10.99. But either price, I can make money. 
like for example, if I were to run X-ray on this page, um, it's gonna tell me that uh, on Amazon. Let's see, is it on Amazon? Yes, I can see it right here. Here's the link right here, and I can look on Amazon, and you can see on Amazon there's no buy box. This is sold out. It's like a hot toy uh, product for the Christmas season. And if I hit see all buying options, look at these prices: a hundred and seventeen dollars. Uh, $130. That's crazy. Remember how much it is on Walmart? There's two prices, one for 79 and there's this crazy option that looks like there might be a flash deal for only $10.99. Imagine how much money you can make on this product selling it for $130 on Amazon. All right, guys. You know, we've got uh, Black Friday coming up and people are doing tons of Black Friday orders. So again, you're not ready for private label yet. You want to just, you know, flip a few things to get some extra bucks during this holiday season. Start looking at all those mailers and looking on websites and, and things like that where it's showing their specials. And then see that if that product is on Amazon and what it's going for. Um, I did a video on it before, but it was that 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 product I said I did tens of thousands of dollars for last year. It was a it was like a monster truck remote control car. One product I was buying it for $39.99 at Walmart. And I was buying hundreds of these and selling them for over $100 on Amazon because they were completely sold out of the regular manufacturer on Amazon. So there's another way that you can find product opportunity uh, that's not private label. All right, it's time to go ahead. And we did an international trip a little bit ago with Adriana. Let's take another international plane trip now. All right, we are now in Canada. Uh, one of our first Canadian employees here is Leilama. Leilama, how's it going today? Wait, we can't hear. Are you are you muted? Um, sorry, I was muted. There we go. All I'm right. doing great, thank you. How about you? I'm doing just delightful. Thanks. So now let's just get right into it. Give us your 30 second Amazon story. Right. I think this was some. Uh, Four or five years ago that I was working in finance and uh, my brother and I discovered the opportunity of selling on Amazon. And uh, we're like, let's give it a shot. Little did we know the opportunity that was awaiting us. And uh, through trial and error is kind of how we learned about Amazon. And then he started his agency. That's how I started consulting um, Amazon sellers on product, um, like listing optimization, product photography. And now here I am at Helium 10 and it's been, um, a little over a, a wonderful month for me. All right. Well, yep. You are the new, uh, the newbie, uh, I guess uh, on the team here, but already we're going to meet somebody later who is even newer than you, uh, mm -hmm. to the team. So now, uh, what cool facts did I discover about Leilama? She's actually a professional photographer, uh, in her spare time. And also, um, if I'm not mistaken, you speak three languages, English, yeah. Urdu, and Pashto. is it called Pash, Pashto? Yeah, uh, that's correct. I said it right? Okay, cool. Yeah. Can, can you say something in, in Urdu or Pashto right now, like like hello to everybody or something like that? Assalamu alaikum. Um, me, uh, alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I got it right. Oh, good job on that. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you for being on here. And let's see, what did you prepare? I'm looking at my list here. Ooh, this is a good one, guys. Uh, gift guides. And also she's going to talk about black box again in Helium 10. And then we're going to go off of Amazon again for a, a cool way of looking at something that's trending on other websites. So let's go ahead and show your strategies now. All right. Let's dive right into the product research strategies that I have for you. And my first strategy is going to be gift guides. So you simply run a Google search for top holiday gifts, birthday gifts, anything you want. I personally went for top sustainable gifts just because who doesn't love a good gift, which is also environment friendly, right? So chances are you're going to get a plethora of articles on gift ideas. But what you want to do is sift through as many as possible and look for the ones that are unique. So you're not entering a market that is already saturated. Now, just by the way, guys, this gift guide strategy was also mentioned by Tim Jordan in one of the Project X videos in case you guys missed it there. And... Uh, 
Wow, I'm getting some <laughs> brilliant suggestions already. So you guys have to check this out. I think my favorite is going to be this one. And uh, just to point out, opportunity could mean something completely different to you than me. But as you're scrolling through these lists and lists of product ideas, you want to keep in mind what signifies opportunity to you. I personally like going for... Um, a product between let's say 20 and 70 dollars so that i get a good profit margin but i also don't want to spend too much on inventory costs right so keep these benchmarks in mind and whatever you select as your top favorites make sure to run different helium 10 tools on them to validate that this is in fact a good product now on to strategy number two which is black boxes advanced filters and a newer way to use black box for keywords is by analyzing the top 10 listings on a page. So for example, I could say Helium 10, show me keywords with at least 3000 in search volume in the baby category with at least six of the top 10 having more than 5000 in revenue and less than 150 in reviews. And the reason this would be valuable is that there's a, at least six listings with that kind of revenue. And then I know there's obviously demand for the products and not just the keyword itself, right? If And if there's less than 150 reviews, then I also know that there's some room for me to enter the market. So I, I did a test, okay? And on some of these keywords like uh, the braided crib bumper. And when you look at it on Amazon, there's definitely some opportunity to tap into. And the last strategy would be Pinterest trends. Now, I always come across the most unique products when I'm scrolling on Pinterest, and it's honestly such a great place to look into if you want to be one of the very first people in the market. So you would go on to trends.pinterest.com and check your newsfeed for any trending ideas. Sometimes it has great suggestions, but because it is holiday season right now, a lot of the stuff you will find on here will be seasonal. So if that so doesn't, if that work, doesn't for you, work for you, then you could just start, you could with, just a start with a search keyword on search on the search bar and maybe wait for autocomplete to see what is trending. From me, I'm going to go for rattan uh, just because I'm thinking along the lines of home category, maybe decor. And so far, I have to say it does look promising from the trends it's showing me. So you can just keep looking at different products until something catches your eye. And for me, I came across this cute rainbow shaped decor item. So I guess I'm going to go for a keyword with this. Maybe it's a uh, rattan rainbow. And to further validate my information, I can go into demand analyzer to get a rough estimate of the average revenue, average price. And honestly, this looks like an opportunity to me. So maybe I can further investigate it with other tools, but uh, that would be it for me. That would be all for me today. All right, Rattan uh, gift guide, uh, super interesting. Uh, here i don't know what happened to our background here our background just changed here but uh anyways um the the pinterest trends you know we've actually a lot of people don't even realize this we've had this mm -hmm. uh, as a part of the tool you didn't show it much in your video because you know you, you switch from one tab to the other but actually that was that screenshot you gave was actually on the pinterest page right yeah yeah that's right yeah so like guys uh th th we've had this for almost a year now um where if you're on the pinterest trends page hit the Chrome extension, and then you could actually see what the demand is on Amazon for those keywords. Now, Leilama, you know, we're now up to 19 strategies, and don't feel bad if you pick your own, but up to now, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite uh, one that we've done so far? Uh, I really like the black box advanced filters just for those days when I'm feeling uninspired and lacking ideas. I can just mindlessly look on it, and it'll give me a bunch of suggestions. Like, I don't even have to do much, so that has yeah. to be my favorite. 
yeah, I like it. I, I'm lazy like you too. And so like, I don't want to <laughs> actually walk to the store to look or open up uh, guides and stuff like that. That's actually a great way um, to look for product research. So thank you so much for, uh, for bringing these to us. Now, uh, I've got a couple more um, numbers 20 and 21 for product research strategy. One is another way to sell on Amazon without even having to invest any money at all. And another one is also, again, having to do with that mobile app so you can do some research on the go. Let's show those videos now. One way you guys can make money on Amazon without having to invest a dime is the Merch by Amazon program. It's a print-on-demand service that Amazon provides. And how it works is you just upload your artwork and a listing gets created and like on shirts and other items like that. And if somebody wants to buy it, they buy it. And only then do you actually get some money or do you have to pay uh, Amazon for it. So you're actually going to get commission off of the sale. I think it's something like $12. The, the price is what you pay. And then so if you sell it for 18 you get 6 bucks. And so it's a pretty easy way to, to make some money. Uh, you can search uh, on your own for different keywords that you might think are trending out there that people might want to buy shirts like, you know, uh, Mountain Lover shirts or something like that. Um, or you can actually do research here in Black Box for keywords. So here in Black Box for keywords, uh, I'm, I'm looking at minimum search volume 3,000 and uh, average age in month of maximum of four, meaning that this is a keyword that just kind of came onto the radar. Um, and I, I see tons of uh, interesting, you know, terms that have shirt uh, in the uh, in the title. Um, and, you know, some of these uh, th there's going to be a lot of like, um, you know, political ones here. Like I see a lot of Brandon shirts here that have thousands of of searches. Uh, but right here's a couple uh, momster shirt and squid shirt. Now, obviously, you can't do squid games logos or, or trying to copy things that you saw. But but if you actually look at the squid game shirts, there's people who just put like green letters on a white shirt and. Anybody who watches the that show knows what that means, and may, I don't know. You'd have to you know check with a trademark lawyer if that's okay or not. Um, but I see tons of merch by Amazon people uh, making some good money here on those kind of shirts. Uh, for the monster shirts, this was probably hot during uh, Halloween. It's like some scary designs right here, and then I could see Dad Killer instead of Dracula. So it was like for mom and dad different ideas for shirts. So again, uh, Merch by Amazon is a great way to kind of build up capital before you're ready for private label. Uh, another thing that is another product research idea, maybe you are in the actual Amazon mobile app. And like, for example, I'm here on the uh, Project X coffin shelf. Well, you can actually do kind of like a Cerebro search, which is the Helium 10 reverse ASIN tool. And maybe, you know, you're just browsing the, the Amazon app and you're like, hey, I wonder what how much money this product makes or what are the keywords that drive the sales? Well, you can set it up once you have the Helium 10 mobile app. You just hit share in the Amazon app and then you would want to hit here Helium 10. And then once you hit Helium 10, it's actually going to open up that product here and it's going to show you the estimated sales the last 30 days, $6,000. And it's going to show you the top uh, keywords, all right? And I can actually expand it out. I can see coffin shelf here, uh, oddities and curiosities. And then I could just start going down a rabbit trail doing some searches. You know, maybe I see something here that's interesting and I want to see related keywords. Or I just happen to see something um, anywhere. You know, like if you guys remember, one of my first uh, things was showing you what, what was in the tequila room. But however I come up with keyword ideas, um, I could actually go here and hit research. And I could look up something like cool home decor. And I would just type it in right here. And then it's going to find me the related uh, keywords here. So let's look up cool home decor and let's see, you know, what, what's the search volume here? Um, what are the top products here? And, and I could see here, bubble candle, a uh, dog figurine storage box, a uh, bonsai tree, spaceman tapestry. A lot of crazy uh, products here are showing up on cool home decor and I could see what related keywords are. So there's a lot of ways that you can use, uh, do research, product research right here from both the Amazon app and the Helium 10 mobile app. All right, so there is some more product research. Uh, we've come to the, the end of our 22. Don't forget to stick around. We've got six bonus ones coming for you uh, in a little bit. Now, we've been uh, we've done two, if I'm not mistaken, international trips recently. Let's go ahead and take our longest trip of the day.
All right, we've got Marcus here, our uh, new uh, German language uh, evangelist. Uh, willkommen, Marcus. Hello, Bradley. How are you? Wie geht's dir? I don't know what you just said, but um, <laughs> I assume mean, it's some kind of greeting. So that's great. Thank. You. It's great to have you uh, here. We we definitely want to uh, be able to, you know, just like with Adriana in the Spanish speaking market, we want to also make sure that all, all of those who who speak German around the world are also taken care of. So you're definitely going to be uh, helping us out on there. But for the, for many, it's the first time seeing you. So can you give your 30 second uh, Amazon story for us? Yeah, of course. So I started. Um... I started e-commerce while I was in school, making some money on the side, and soon I discovered Amazon. Actually, I started uh, arbitrage there. And you know, when you are an entrepreneur, you always look for the next opportunity. So on the side, I always started different businesses, went in and out, but I always did Amazon. And the last big thing was to start a YouTube channel in Germany, and it grew to the biggest one there. And now I'm on board in the Helium 10 team. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, you mentioned some of these side businesses, and one, you know, your cool fact that I wanted to bring out was how you turned a hobby of photography, and then within one year, you became this sought-after photographer, and you were flying to Antigua and and Paris doing photo shoots and yeah. and other things. And then the other thing is, uh, I really wanted to point out here was dur during a, a time you actually lost like uh, fifty pounds in just like a few months, or what was that? Oh, it was like more more than a year. But More yeah, than a year. All right. Well, I, I I gained fifty pounds in the last year, so I definitely need to <laughs> get some some tips from you on on how to lose that weight. So that's pretty that's pretty impressive too. Um. So, anyways, uh, you're brand new to the team, so I, I didn't want to uh, have to have you do too many strategies. So you picked your best uh product research strategy. Let's go ahead and and take a look at it now. So the other day I was doing some product research and I came across the keyword crystal shelf display. Interesting. I wondered what are people searching that are looking for this product. So I made a quick search in our keyword tool Magnet and Magnet came back with a result of 3670 different keywords that are all connected through organic search, through PPC, through Board Together, everything relevant. But while I was doing product research, I wanted to mix it up a bit more and I used the new filter title density. So I limited the search volume to a minimum of 2000 searches a month. So only products that are searched a lot. And for title density, I set a maximum of three. And what this does is to filter it even more down to just products that have their keywords not more than maximum of three times on the first page of the Amazon search results. So even more opportunity. For example, circle shelf with over 3000 searches a month and only three products with circle shelf in the title or the next one also over 3000 searches a month shadow box with shelves. I wonder what these look like. And this is why title density gives you a complete new angle in your product research. All right. So that was really, really cool. Um, that's probably one of my favorites uh, of the 22, because if you guys uh, have seen the podcast episodes about the Maldives honeymoon strategy, don't forget, guys, I told you about the Serious Sellers podcast. If you go back to episodes 200 and 250, we talked about the Maldives honeymoon launch strategy, which really focuses on trying to find keywords that do not have that uh, that do not have many listings with it in the title. So that is a really really great way. Thank you for that. Now, Adriana said that she was going to go ahead and remake this presentation in Spanish. Um, are you able to do that for German too for us? Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Marcus, for coming on here. We appreciate it. So now, real quick, guys, I, I told you before, uh, I'm going to have another six bonus strategies for you. So don't go, go anywhere. Some of these, uh, you know you know how we do here. We like to save the best for last. So I got one more guest. And also, I'm going to give you three of my bonus um, hacks as well that some of them uh, I barely have ever talked about in the past. But before that, um, we saw a lot of you guys at the beginning here who mentioned that you know you weren't yet helium 10 members and i did say i was going to have an offer you know i'm not trying to sell something that's 500 dollars. i'm just going to get right to the point guys uh we have an offer for you today let's go ahead and throw it up on the screen uh the code here is a 50 percent off for your first month of helium 10. 
All right. Um, if you want to get that, it's helium10.com forward slash research 50. If you guys are already Helium 10 members, don't go anywhere. We got some other bonus strategies here. But what we like to do when we do these specials, because we don't do uh, webinars, uh, you know, every single week. Like I think we've done four in the last um, in the last two months, maybe, including one last week for the elite uh, group. But we always like giving specials for those of you guys who stay to the end of our workshop. So first of all, 50% off our regular pricing plan is $99. So I don't know what that comes out to like $49 and 50 cents or something like that is what you get for the first month. But even after that, guys, um, it's really definitely worth it. I mean, you talked about, uh, we, we talked about here, all these different strategies that you, that you learn from a lot of them having to do with helium 10. I mean, imagine if you just use helium 10 to find one product to sell on Amazon that is making you money throughout the rest of the next couple of years. I mean, it more than pays for the membership. Um, $99 a month once it goes to the regular price. I mean, think about what that works out to uh, per day, right? It's like, what, $3 a day? You cannot even get a tank of gas in California for less than $4.50. So if you think about it, this is, you know, like, uh, you know, two, like $99. I think most of you guys are spending in California. I think a lot of the people on this call here are from California. You guys are spending way more than that. Uh, on gas in like just two weeks alone. So it's definitely worth it to upgrade your business. But we have other bonuses. So that's one bonus is this 50% off. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to point here. 50% off offer right here. Go to helium10.com forward slash research, research 50. The the second bonus is th this one is important. It's a We have a money back guarantee here at Helium 10. So that's why every single one of you guys who had posted in the comments, oh, I'm not a Helium 10 member or I'm a free member, there really is no reason for you guys not to sign up because here's here's why. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Helium 10 is not for everybody, especially if you're not going to end up selling on Amazon. All right? I'm not going to be this guy who says, oh, everybody in the entire world needs to be a Helium 10 member or else you guys are going to suck at life or something like that. No, not everybody uh, is, is, is it for. But here's the thing. You're not going to know if it's for you unless you try it out. So that's why we have this bonus of the money back guarantee. Sign up now, get into the education of it, fool, fool around with the, those little filters and things that we showed you guys how to use in black box to find your product. And before the month is over, if you're just like, you know what, Amazon is not for me, or you know what, um, I'm just going to use those strategies that Bradley talked about today that was off of Amazon. I don't really need Helium 10. I'm just going to go around my house and find products, or I'm going to go on Etsy and Pinterest and I don't need Helium 10. Just call customer service up or, or send an email, I should say, and you can ask for your money back. No, no questions asked. We're not going to like put you through this like, you know, 20 question thing in order to qualify you to get your money back. You just say, you know what? Bradley said I can have my money back because uh, I'm really not going to use Helium 10. We'll go ahead and give you your $49.50 back. So there is zero risk. Literally everybody, I want everybody to go ahead and sign up now who hadn't done it. Uh, another bonus that we're going to give you guys is you're going to get free access to the Helium 10 Academy. With Helium 10, we have actually over 30 tools from A to Z on how to manage your Amazon business from product research like we're talking about today, listing optimization, marketing, analytics, uh, customer communication, all kinds of things. And so a lot of people, when they're new, they're like, whoa, what, where in the world do I even start? How do I learn to use this whole platform? That's why we created the Helium 10 Academy, and it's free for all of you guys. So you're going to be able to sign up at academy.helium10.com and you'll be able to go through a, a structured course on how best to use this tool completely free. So there's another bonus for you. Uh, another bonus, this is probably one of the biggest ones for all of you who are brand new to Amazon is Helium 10 Platinum members, which is what this deal is for. You get full access to the Freedom Ticket Training Course. This is a full A to Z course on not how to use Helium 10 like Academy, but how to sell on Amazon. Uh, courses uh, like this usually cost three uh, or four thousand uh, dollars out there. Uh, Denise is all of a sudden somehow throwing up. Uh, uh, I love it. Denise says Freedom Ticket is priceless. Um, she wanted to get her voice heard. I love that. Freedom Ticket is priceless, but it actually does have a price though. Um, if you were to go to freedomticket.com now, you guys know how much uh, it would be. It's nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars or nine ninety-nine, something like that. But if you're a Helium Ten member, your bonus is. We're covering that cost. Like Denise said, uh, it's priceless. It, it literally is going to be priceless if you're a Helium 10 member because we're not charging you one penny more. Uh, Freedom Ticket was voted the number one uh, course in all of Amazon for two years, the last two years running. It's made by our top mentor, uh, Kevin King, 
who we contract with to give you guys this amazing knowledge. So that's another bonus. We also have a lot of partners here at Helium 10. Uh, and you can you guys can see some of these partnered or partner companies uh, at directory.helium10.com. And a couple of these were very gracious to give bonuses to the people who signed up today. One of them is a marketing by Emma. She does a lot of listing optimization. So one thing you guys are going to learn about in Helium 10 is that once you get brand registered, you're going to have access to something that is called A plus content. You guys know what that is? It's like if you see a listing, there's the description and the bullet points, and then you scroll down. A lot of people just have the just you know, like a block of text, right? Some people have all this like visual displays that's that has pictures and all these other cool uh, aspects of it. That's called A plus content. So the uh, bonus that Emma is giving uh, is that anybody who signs up, I believe it's actually the first 50 users who sign up under this code here, you guys are going to get uh, $50 off of what she charges to make that A plus content. It's actually very difficult. I never. I outsource my A plus content. I used to have uh, Karen do that for us because I'm not that graphical. Graphical is that even a word? <laughs> I'm not. Uh, my graphic game is not that great. All right. So um, if you're in the same boat as me, you might need to outsource that. Those who sign up today are going to get fifty dollars off if you choose her service. Another website. Um, I'm actually going to bring these guys on the podcast because almost nobody knows about it. Anybody ever heard of Soap? Like Soap, but with an F. Fope is a really cool company where you can outsource your product photography, all right? Product photography, you know, you usually, usually, you don't want to just like go with your, your phone and take pictures of your product and throw it up on your Amazon listing. It's always great to have professional work done. One way to get really unique lifestyle images is by using this kind of crowdsourcing product photography. And that's what FOAP is, F-O-A-P. They have this company where you can like send your product to different influencers and then they'll take a whole bunch of pictures for you and then you can pick which ones you want and use on your listing. So for those who use this code here, you're gonna get 10% off of their services. Um, lastly, one last bonus for you guys, those who sign up today, and these are guaranteed to go, I said the first 50 for the marketing by Emma one, but all of these bonuses are guaranteed to be good through tomorrow um, for those who sign up is I'm going to personally give you guys a keyword research workshop. All right. So, you know, however many people, if there's only 50 people or a hundred people who sign up, only you guys will be in this workshop, which will be live and interactive, you know, right here on this one, you guys can like chat with me, but we're going to actually be like a zoom where you guys can actually come and talk to me for a keyword research, because the first stage is what we're talking about today, right? Which is product research. So once you found your product, You've bought it from a factory in China. Now it's on the way. What's the next thing you have to do? You have to start doing your keyword research so that you can be able to go to the next step, which is making your Amazon listing. So I'm going to give you guys a private workshop uh, with myself. I might invite some of our other guests that we've had on to do it with me, but we're going to go over how to find the best keywords for your listing. All right. Only the people who sign up are going to be um, in that workshop. So guys, make sure to sign up as soon as possible, helium10.com forward slash research 50. And um, let me know in the chat if you guys are going to sign up. Um, and if you have any issues at all with signing up, uh, make sure to reach out to support at helium10.com and they're going to be able to help you out. All right. I promise you guys bonus strategies. And that's what we're going to do. First up, we've been taking international trips around the world and to the East Coast and North Carolina and uh, Indiana and Canada, Mexico. Instead of a uh, plane trip, we're going to take a little bicycle ride right here in California. Let's see who we're visiting next. All right, all the way from nearby Temecula, <laughs> California. Carrie, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing delightful. Now, you are a familiar face to a lot of our Helium 10 audience because you've been doing some really cool uh, webinars on Walmart. But actually, I'm wondering, same thing as everybody else, what's your 30-second Amazon story? Yeah, so uh, around 2016, my dad actually took over a company, and they weren't doing too great, and they were only selling about $200 a month on Amazon. So I was like, I think I could do a little bit better than that. So I started learning how to sell on Amazon on YouTube. That's really how I got into it. And, um, and then we started growing from there and I started helping other companies, um, with optimizing their listings and with their sales. And now we're expanded to Shopify as well as Walmart. So 
Awesome. Awesome. All right. In my stalking of you, uh, I, you've got one of those like uh, most interesting woman ever, you know, stories. <laughs> you've lived in South America. You've been a high yeah. school varsity basketball coach. Um, I think you used to, used to be a figure skater back in the day. And so now you're all uh, you're a professional like rollerblader oh, here yeah. and you, you do line dancing all the time. You're actually we're doing a team meeting, guys, in December. Everybody that you saw. And she said she's going to teach us all uh, line dancing um, uh, soon. So I yep. don't know. I'm good at like Zumba and like Latin dancing, but I've never done line dancing. So we'll see. Yeah, you'll be but, great. <laughs> all right. I, I hope so. I hope so. Now, uh, Carrie, um, you are bringing us some bonus training. And one of them actually mm -hmm. is not even a, anything to do about Amazon product research, but Walmart. Another one mm -hmm. is like, I, I don't want to give it away, but it's it's a way that you can make money on Amazon without buying physical products and mm -hmm. it's not merch by Amazon and it's not KDP, but you just, ah, it, it like requires zero investment. So I hope you guys are yeah. excited about that. And then uh, Adriana, I think had talked a little bit about opportunity explore and you're, um, if I'm not mistaken, are going to bring up another, um, another uh, kind of cool hack for that. So anyways, yep. let's go ahead and see what bonus strategies you've got for us. There is so much opportunity on walmart.com and I'm going to show you using a very competitive product on Amazon, the garlic press. So what you're going to do is you want to go to walmart.com and then you're going to search for really competitive products. I chose garlic press, but you should have a list of very competitive products that you know have a high demand and are very competitive on amazon.com. Then once you search it, you'll see at the top, there's some boxes and those boxes help you narrow down your search. On Garlic Press, when I searched it, it shows Stainless Steel, OXO, Mincer, Rachel Ray, and Cleaner. I'm actually going to choose Stainless Steel and that's gonna narrow it down just a little bit. And then it gives me all the results of Stainless Steel Garlic Presses. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna pull the X-Ray Chrome extension for Walmart. And what, the first thing I take a look at is WFS, which is Walmart Fulfillment Services. And on this extension, it's showing that garlic press or stainless steel garlic press only has 13% Walmart Fulfillment Services products. So that means that only 13% of the sellers are utilizing Walmart Fulfillment Services for this product. And that's really good news because it's a very low number and Walmart Fulfillment Services is a very important part of ranking. So if you can get in there, get Walmart Fulfillment Services going for you, then you can actually start ranking and beating your competitors by simply implementing that. The next thing I want to take a look at is the Walmart revenue. So I like to sort from highest to lowest to see who's selling the most on walmart.com. And I took a look here and actually uh, this particular product that's the highest selling is selling $12,996 in revenue per month. Uh, and there is an ASIN right next to it, which actually has a link to the Amazon product so we can actually take a look at the Amazon product and see how much they're selling on Amazon which is really cool so when we pull the x-ray extension it actually shows how many sales this product is selling on amazon.com it's the same exact product and it's only selling 50 units per month and that is a totaling in one thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars in revenue which is quite baffling knowing that it's selling over 12,000 on walmart.com. But this just goes to show that some products that are really competitive on amazon.com might have a lot of great opportunity and very low competition on walmart.com. The next thing I wanna show you is actually how to find product opportunities on amazon.com through using the product opportunity explorer. The first thing you wanna do is go to your Amazon Seller Central account, click on the growth tab, and then once you're on the growth tab, click Product Opportunity Explorer. I actually went ahead and already searched Coffin Shelf because I wanted to utilize Coffin Shelf as an example here. So then once you've searched Coffin Shelf, you're actually going to click on the word Coffin Shelf in the results. And it'll take you to a page that's going to show you how many units are sold per month for that search term and all kinds of great information. But the information I want to take a look at most is the conversion rate. So if we take a look at Coffin Shelf, it has a conversion rate, a conversion rate of 4.05%. And then the next search term, which is related to it, is actually Coffin Bookshelf. And all the search terms down below this are related to that 
search term that we did. So Coffin Bookshelf actually only has a 0.92% conversion rate. Now, why would that be so low? We can go ahead and take a look on amazon.com and I searched Coffin Bookshelf to see what was available under that search term. And it looks like there are not very many coffin bookshelves, okay? So we have very small floating shelves that are 11 inches. They can fit some, some books in there, but very small ones. And so there really aren't any coffin bookshelves. So if someone's looking for that, they're going to have a harder time finding it, which would be the reason why the conversion rate is so low. So this is a great opportunity for you to go in and see these related terms where the conversion rate is so low because basically no one's offering this product and people are searching for it. So that's a product that you can get in with very low competition and, um, and a good opportunity. The next thing is if you, and this is a bonus, if you are having a hard time raising the money to buy your initial set of inventory, I have a really great solution for you. And that is Amazon Explore. Amazon Explore allows you to list different things like tours of your city or um, classes on how to cook or do some sort of talent that you have. So basically you can set your price for these things. So if you live in a really cool place, you can give tours of your city. If you are really good at cooking, you can give cooking classes or any kind of classes that you want. It's really kind of a great way to start because you don't have to have any money to start and you can start generating an income and generating money so that you can go ahead and buy your first set of inventory. The way that you actually um, get paid is just by listing your products or your, your services on this Amazon Explorer and then setting the date and time when it's convenient for you and then people will buy it. Uh, you can actually take people on a virtual tour of a store that you might have if there's a brick and mortar store that you have. Um, but there's a ton of different things that you can do. All you have to do is apply and then start offering your services. So if you are having a hard time raising your revenue, uh, go ahead and check out Amazon Explorer. All right. Now that Amazon Explorer, like how many, let me know in the, in the comments guys, how many of you guys knew there was a such thing like that on Amazon that you could make money. Now, Carrie, if you did this, the possibilities are endless. You could teach people how to line dance. Yeah. <laughs> You're in Temecula. So what do we have in Temecula that people might want to take tours of? Some winery tours. Some wineries. Yeah. Um, I can teach people you know to skate. How to rollerblade. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, I love it. So you know what, Carrie? I'm, I'm, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but that's how I roll here. If you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> how about say, being the first person on our team to actually set up an account just to like show that we can do it and then pick one of those things that we just mentioned. And then yeah. let's do like a, like a content piece on how you can do it. And um, if you don't get anybody to sign up for your, your little thing, uh, I'll go ahead and sign up uh, for it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that'd be fun. I've always wanted to be a tour guide. So that's actually one of the things I want to do in life. <laughs> so <we're talking laughs> awesome, perfectly. awesome. I love it. I love it. All right, Carrie, thank you so much for that. We've come to the end now. We've got three more uh, bonuses and then we're going to get all in. We're going to bring everybody back and get to your Q and A's on any of these strategies we talked about. So let's go ahead and see our final three bonus strategies. All right, here are some more bonus uh, product research techniques. This one's using brand analytics. You only have this if you have brand registry with Amazon. Um, so if you don't have that, then you're not gonna have access to this. So once you register your brand with your trademark and everything with Amazon and they recognize you, you'll be able to open up this page. And it's basically telling you what are the most searched uh, keywords on Amazon. And of those keywords, uh, what are the top three products that have gotten clicks from uh, that resulted from a search of that keyword? And then of those products, you know, what uh, percentage of, of the conversion do they have? And so this is a method that, that Kevin King ha has taught a couple of times. And and he he downloads this, all right? You can, he downloads into this to a CSV file. Sometimes he'll actually download three or four different weeks and then compare the data using pivot tables and things like that. But in a nutshell, uh, a basic explanation of one of the things he looks at is he's looking at, at keywords where the ones that are the most clicked, if you add up the top three, it doesn't equal that many. For example, here's a Pixel 6 case. I'm assuming that's a, a phone case. Of course, you wouldn't you know, want to do phone cases, guys. That's very saturated. But look here. The, the number one clicked only has got 7%. The, the number two's only got 7%. And the number three's like got like 6%. So, so we're talking like 20% only uh, are the top three clicked, meaning 80% 
are, are the rest of 80% of the clicks are coming from other items on the page. Now let's contrast that with heating pad. All right. Um, the top one is like 23%. The second one is 13. And then the next one is seven. So, so that's like 40 to 50% of the clicks are taken by just three products. So there's a big difference that you can see there. And sometimes these numbers are even more extreme. So, you know, how you use that information is up to you. You know, some people say, Hey, um, I want to find the one where there's hardly anybody uh, or, or the top three uh, click are, are not having a big percentage of clicks so that there's actually wide open for other people. Other people say, you know what? I want to see where there's only, where there's like one, two or three products dominating because it might be easier for me to get a chunk of that. So again, brand analytics is a great way to look things up. The next one is from Tim Jordan from Project Exit and he talked about a similar web. So what you do is you can put in a website so like, for example, let's say I, I'm going on bespokepost.com to get product ideas. This is similar to Lay Lama's about the gift, uh, the gift guides um, and like a gift box. This is a great way to look for product research. And so maybe I found some good things here. Well, take this uh, website, put it on similar web, and then it'll actually tell you uh, other similar, similar websites. Huh? Imagine that similar web telling you a similar website. So now it'll give me other places where I can get product ideas. TaylorStitch.com, Stitch uh, Fix. Um, we got Urban Outfitters, uh, LL Bean, different similar websites and even referral website. Also visited websites, Huckberry.com, CoolMaterial.com cratejoy.com so it gives you very similar websites um another one here let's just say i'm doing a boom by cindy joseph.com that's if maybe i'm in the beauty niche i'm checking out ezra firestone's company right here i could see related companies that are also in the beauty niche and don't forget that if you can find uh websites that are actually shopify websites uh, helium tens uh, uh demand analyzer is going to work on the Shopify website. So you can see what the demand is on some of the keywords that are on the page. So again, this hack from um, Tim Jordan, similarweb.com, put it in to see similar websites. All right, um, another thing, last one of the day is frequently bought together. So here is the Helium 10 coffin shelf, right? And and what frequently bought together means are is that people are buying our product with another product in the same purchase, all right? Um, you know, there's another thing that some some uh, listings have. I don't think ours does, but it's called customer also bought. That just means one person bought uh, one thing like on Monday and then they bought something else on Wednesday. So it could be unrelated. But as you can see, Amazon has a history of our coffin shelf being bought with this either coffin le letter board or moon shaped mirrors all right and how can this be product research well it could be line extensions you know or it could be maybe a new bundle like a new bundle like hey maybe i'm going to make a product that has coffin shelf and a letter board made like a coffin because it's it's similar well i can go into black box product targeting enter in the asin and it's going to show me not just those three frequently bought together but all the frequently bought together the other ones that we have seen over the last few weeks. And as you can see, look, look at the products that are being frequently bought together with our coffin shelf. Here's some bat stickers. Um, here's a bat shelf, right? I'm seeing a theme there. There's the, that moon shelf that we saw, bat lights. Look at this 3D skull ice mold tray. You know, this could be great by itself uh, if, if I wanted to extend this spooky brand or possibly as a combo with the coffin shelf. Um, I don't know what the heck this is, a, a Bloss Lotus cotton swab holder. We got a, a skeleton hand ring. Um, here's a, a coffin mirror. Here's a coffin key holder. So this could give you ideas on future bundling where you could actually put this product together with your product and offer it together because you actually have um, proof that people do like to buy this thing together. All right. So let's, Carrie's back here. Oh, <laughs> What's Carrie doing here? <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie's like, What's going on here? I thought I was done for the day. Uh, but, anyways, guys, um, that was great. Uh, 20, two plus six, 28 strategies all together here. So, um, we're going to be ha opening these up for QA in just a little bit, but I want you guys in the strategy, um, or in the strategy, in the com, I'm all flustered now, uh, in, the, in the comment section, 
which one was your favorite? Let me just recap really quick. Um, the first three that I did was black box products, regular filters. I did one on how to validate private label opportunity. We had the PPC test listing. Shivali came on and gave us about how to go for uh, to Etsy and Pinterest because something might be saturated on Amazon. She talked about KDP and also how to use the demand analyzer on Alibaba.com. Um, I had another strategy where I showed you how to look for product research in daily life. Remember how I toured the tequila room and found a couple of cool products? Uh, Lem came on and said, holy smokes, look at this by online arbitrage for big items. Um, he had one for black box for keywords. He also had one on how to find the top sellers for Etsy sellers on there. Um, I came back and I gave you guys how to use the Helium 10 mobile app in order to do retail arbitrage uh, product research on the go, like in stores. Adriana came and she talked about black box for products, how you can look for the filters that are good selling but poor quality. She also showed us how to look at trends on keywords and look for ones that have increasing search volume. Uh, she also talked about the opportunity to explore uh, how the number of products could be an indication of opportunity or not. Um, the next two was about market tracker. It's an analytics tool, but how you can use it for product research. Um, and then I showed how to look at, you know, like Black Friday deals or deals from mailers in order to get products that might be selling for much higher on Amazon so that you can do either drop shipping or arbitrage. Uh, Leilama came on and gave us the strategy from Tim, how to look at gift guides for product ideas. Also how to use those advanced filters in black box. And she also showed how to use Pinterest trends to get some ideas on what's trending on Pinterest that could end up being Amazon ideas. The next two were the merch by Amazon and also how to use the mobile app to do keyword opportunity, uh, research on the go. Um, the last of the regular, um, strategies we gave was Marcus who talked about using that brand new title density filter that is in Magnet and Cerebro. The bonus strategies we just went over, Carrie talked about how to look at the conversion share on the Opportunity Explorer. She talked about how to find product opportunity on Walmart, you know, skipping Amazon altogether and just going directly to Walmart. And then she talked about something that I think a lot of people didn't know about, which was the Amazon Explorer uh, way of being able to make money on Amazon. And the final three bonuses was the Kevin King brand analytics uh, strategy that we talked about uh, using the website, similar web also from Tim Jordan, and then how to use frequently bought together in order to get ideas. Now, as you guys are, are, um, are putting in the comments on which, uh, which strategy was your favorite. And right before we do the Q and I'm actually going to bring Lonnie on Lonnie and Gio are behind the scenes, making sure this webinar run really well, but Lonnie, are you there? Lonnie, what have we been privately keeping track of, or you have been privately keeping track of in the comments? Yeah, so I've been keeping track of a few different things, but one of them that only one person has noticed, has anyone realized that Bradley has changed his outfit, hat and shirt about 10 times since the webinar started? And only one person pointed that out. <laughs> Yep. So that um, one person, and then plus you've been also trying to track like who's the most engaged in the chat and everything. So what are we going to do for those two, the, the one person who noticed, and then the other person, if you can say who their names are too. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been keeping track. I'm one of the people behind the scenes tuned in at Helium 10 HQ and people who comment a lot and people who are very engaged and answer all of Bradley's questions. Hey, we are keeping track of you. So feel the peace, that is your YouTube account name. You are getting a prize as well as Denise Federico, if you guys are still tuned in. So remember that workshop that Bradley mentioned that is only going to be for new subscribers. Well, actually you are going to be invited to that workshop as well as get to stay on after to have a very small group of literally only one or two people, if you guys both attend, with Bradley and with all of our brand evangelists to have a little powwow and ask any questions that you might need. Awesome. Awesome guys. All right. We, we do prizes every now and then, but this time I was like, you know what, let's do something that we don't even announce what the prize is and let's just see what, what happens. Um, for those of you who, uh, did that Instagram thing I said at the beginning where I was like, Hey, tag helium 10 or tag me, tag helium 10 software, tag H 10 Bradley, um, and repost it. I, I'm going to, 
since we only had two people win that, I'm going to pick a third person from those people. Um, so we're going to get with Cassandra, our social media manager, and see who who she's going to pick the, the winner for that third prize right there. So thank you, Lonnie, and thank you to Gio in the background for making sure this, you know, guys, this is not easy to do all these videos and like little lower thirds things that are popping up on the screen. So thanks, guys, for making it a smooth operation. You look like you're about to say something. And uh, and make sure if you are Feel the Peace or Denise Federico to go ahead and gain get access to your prize um go ahead and reach out to support at helium10.com say that bradley and lonnie sent you and we'll go ahead and get you connected so we can make sure that you attend and okay. here's a comment from feel the peace glad i got noticed i love it all right guys what we're going to do right now is one by one we're going to bring uh, all of our guests back and while uh they're coming on i'm going to throw up some some um of the top uh Things that you guys just said were your favorite and then also let's go ahead and throw that link back up again all right let's throw that link so everybody can have the opportunity to get into helium 10 and get that workshop so if we can throw that link uh back up there at the bottom and while we're doing that yeah there we go and let, let's go ahead and start bringing everybody back all right well you said it was like that was kind of magic I, I went like this and all of a sudden lem appeared anyways uh chantal's favorite was pinterest and alibaba natasha like the etsy and pinterest we got a lot of love for the pinterest um one here that was uh vaughn's favorite um Natasha said demand analyzer on Alibaba. I think that was from uh, Shivali, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Irene says looking for products with low rating. Um, Alma, Etsy, Pinterest, and Amazon Explorer. Dominic likes the da daily life. Um, Laith says the title density. I think that was from Marcus. Uh, we got another vote for Pinterest and merch. This one kind of reflects my uh, opinion on this. Uh, Nahid says too many favorites to single out. Uh, just one. We got a, a somebody who liked the um, the Walmart one. Somebody asked about what's the FOPE discount code. That's after you uh, use the uh, discount uh, code here. You'll get email on how to how to get that discount code. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, you see Bob, Bob noticed, but he noticed too late. Bob noticed the wardrobe changes, but Bob, you should have said something. We, we, we were checking to see if, you, if people said something. Um, all right, let's go ahead now. It's time for our Q and A. We'll go ahead and leave this link up on the screen so that people can, can sign up. Let me know in the comments if you guys signed up. I'll give you a shout out here. But what are your questions? Not, you know, don't ask about the crazy shipping delays or something. Let, let's keep the questions to one of these product research strategies. Or if you got, want to find out about uh, Lem's volleyball career or Marcus's photography or something like that. But something we talked about today, um, give us a, a question. So First of all, this is relevant. I have a Helium 10 starter plan, how to benefit from that discount, all right? So reach out, If you should be able to use that link to, to upgrade, but if not, if not, just reach out to customer support, say you were on the webinar, you wanted to upgrade with that 50% off discount from the starter to the platinum uh, plan, uh, Nanibus. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. This, this is somewhat similar. Browler says, hey, if some of you owned an Amazon store selling millions a year, why do you work at Helium 10 in instead of continuing with your own company? All right. There's a few of us uh, on this call who are doing uh, more than a million dollars a year on Amazon. Now, first of all, let me just be straight up. I don't make that much profit on my Amazon account. Why? Is it because I suck? No. I actually use my selling on Amazon, not trying to get rich or something. But the reason I'm able to come up with all these strategies, guys, and, and Maldives honeymoon method is I am constantly using my profits to actually do a bunch of tests that no Amazon seller should do because it costs a lot of money. I'm using, I don't want to get to use Helium 10's money. I'm using my personal money for this. So my end profit is, I'd be like surprised if it's like even 10%. You know, my, my regular profit is probably like 25, but I put thousands and thousands of dollars into testing things. And then just in general, unless you guys do it, it's hard to describe the feeling. It's, it's kind of, I know it sounds cliche, but it's kind of like better than money being able to be in this position and educate people and then having people come up to me like trade shows and say, oh my God, because of Project X, you know, it changed my life. Like you can't really put money on it. Carrie, Carrie, unmute yourself real quick. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say here? Like, I'm sure you've had that experience yeah. too, right? Yeah. Um, it's just like, you know, sometimes selling can also be a little bit isolating. So being able to get out and share what you know, and then also we learn from a lot of people that watch us or, you know, like come to different shows that we're at, there's a lot of really good benefits to doing both. So I don't, I didn't neglect my own company. I sell with my dad. Um, we're just continuing to grow that. I'm even just 
yeah, just by being at Helium 10 around lots of great sellers, I learn more all the time to improve my own business. So for me, it's a winning situation. I love all things Amazon and I love teaching. I was a teacher before like years ago. So this is, it's a good, people always ask that, but you know, all of us that are doing this, we just are always busy. We always like to do stuff. So we're, we're just, yeah, we, we love all yep. things Amazon and want to share it. Completely agree. All right. Dominic um, said, how many reviews is good to think about and how much is too much? Now there's no one answer to this, this question, but who, who here in the group gave the, um, gave the one about using black box and then the average filters. Was that, uh, who was that? Was that Lem? Yeah, that was Lem, I think, right? Yeah. So, what when you do product research that way, Lem? Mm -hmm. What what range do you look at for for reviews? I look at about a, below 150 reviews, just because that's still like at the beginning of your Amazon journey, or like within the first year is typically where you'll get that. So, I just tend to look at below 150 reviews, and if possible, look at below a four star rating, because then that will indicate really great opportunity. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Oz Group, that name sounds familiar. I remember Oz Group would always come on our YouTube uh, lives. Which tool do you use to see all frequently bought together? So did anybody here on the panel pay attention? That was one that I did, but let me see. Did anybody? Does anybody know which tool in Helium 10 can show the history of frequently bought together? Let's see who wants to show off here. Anybody? Nobody wants to show off? What color, what color, what color shirt am I wearing? Black box. <laughs> black box, yes. But specifically, what tab in black box? There's product the bonus targeting. Question. Product, product targeting. targeting, yes. Product target. See, that, that's why we have a, a team here. We all help each other out. So, product targeting in black box, OS Group. That's the one you just put in the ASIN, and it'll show you the history of frequently bought together. Um, once you find a product idea on Etsy, do you go ahead and order some to test it on Amazon? So that was. Hack number or hack, I say hack, uh, strategy number three, if I'm not mistaken, in today's workshop where I talked about doing that PPC test listing. But I, I talked about it for like one minute. Um, who here can tell us where can somebody go? What YouTube, another YouTube thing where we went in crazy detail about how to do a PPC test listing. Does anybody here remember that? Where we first launched this kind of idea? Project X, you can go watch Project X. Project X. All right, Project X. So I think that was, I, I don't know. Um, I want to say Project X episode three is one. And then I also actually did a Serious Sellers podcast uh, episode uh, dedicated to doing um, how to do um, PPC test listings. All right. I, I would say less than 2% of Amazon sellers actually do it. And you shouldn't do it in every case. It's only when you don't have data um, and you, or, or else you're just feeling like you need more validation, that's a, well, a good time to do it. You could also check, the, check out that Opportunity Explorer I just showed and see if people are searching for it and the conversion rate's low. So, Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Umar says, what's your favorite product search method? I mean, mine probably was the title density one that Marcus brought out. But instead of asking me, let, let's, um, let's say, Adriana, what about you? Now that you watch this whole thing, what was your favorite from, from everybody's today? Well, I love using, of course, um, black box, but I also, I guess the tool that I use every, you know, several times a, a week is X-ray. Uh, so I just jump ahead and, and go on amazon.com, look at the search, um, at the search results and basically take it from there, basically see, um, how much they're selling if it's a market that it's, uh, either increasing in, in, in revenue or it's decreasing in revenue to see, uh, from a first glance, if I want to get into that market at all, right? Um, because if I see that revenue decreasing, then I don't, I'm not too sure if I want to put all my efforts on that market. Whoops, I had muted myself there. All right, thank you so much for that question. And thank you for that answer, Aldiriana. Um, Let's see, uh, just a quick comment here, not a question, but you guys says, I did the Walmart to Amazon arbitrage like Len. That's awesome. Guys, it's not just us. It's not just us coming up with this stuff at the top of our heads and we're the only people who use it. There are people out there who are using these uh, methods here. Um, let's see, what else? How to get Amazon Explore. That, that's open. You Actually, you don't even have to, if I'm not mistaken, you don't even have to have a Seller Central account to use the Amazon Explorer. But if you're talking about the Explorer, Opportunity Explorer, or Amazon Explorer, you kind of put two together there. So if you're talking about the Amazon Explorer that Carrie showed, 
You don't even need to have a Seller Central account, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If you're talking about Opportunity Explorer, um, then you would have to, you know, check if you if you have access to it, and if not, you can ask uh, Amazon when they can get it for you. Let's see. How long will it take to find a product? So Leilama, you know, you know, you sold on Amazon with your brother a, a, a while back. I remember it was some kind of kitchen thing that holds spices. Like, how long yeah. did it take you guys to find that product? Would you say? Um, I think it took us about one to two days of brainstorming. We were kind of asking each other for ideas. Um, back then we didn't have all these resources and tools that we have now, but a couple of hours in one to two days. Yeah. That's kind of what we put towards it. Yeah. I mean, I, you guys saw me doing that video in the tequila room where I found that tequila product in like five seconds. It could be as fast as five seconds. It could mm -hmm. be in the middle, like two days, like Leilama. It, you could be searching for a week or two weeks before you find something. Um, there, there's no right answer there. Inspiration can come from many places. Um, all right. Maxil says, arbitrage, how does it work? Will the item ship from the website to the Amazon customer, or how do you do the shipping? So, so Lem, explain the difference of arbitrage and drop shipping. It sounds like they're talking about almost both of those things here. Yeah, so arbitrage, that's where you would be buying from like a big box store that already sells it like to a consumer. Um, and then that's where you would buy it at that consumer price and then obviously upcharge it or have a good difference of margin that you would sell on Amazon, like in case of the barbecue gas grill versus drop shipping, you you would likely be taking it directly from China via through AliExpress or Alibaba. And then that would have a much longer uh, shipping period, typically like two to four weeks, but it would be a drastically cheaper price because you're getting it directly from the manufacturer versus from like a big box store. Yep. Any way to learn about Amazon? So, so Shivali, what are the different educational courses or, or sources, courses or sources, uh, courses or sources in the helium 10 network that people can take advantage of? For sure. So we have Freedom Ticket, of course, that you mentioned earlier, which is covered if you have a Helium 10 account. You can find that in your dashboard on the top uh, column bar. Is it column or it's it's a row? But you'd be able to click on that and go through the Freedom Ticket course. It's an award-winning FBA course. It's led by Kevin King, who is an e-commerce legend in the space. And uh, a lot of other experts also come on. I believe it's like 160 hours of training. So Freedom Ticket is a great resource to leverage, as well as, of course, there's Project X. You can find that on our YouTube channel. Um, and then there's you can also access Project X from the Helium 10 website. Not to mention, if you're talking about other resources uh, outside of courses, there's, of course, our blog, which we like to keep up to date with new content all the time, and the podcast, which is the number one podcast uh, in the Amazon space in the world. We have over 90,000 listeners every month. Yep. And don't forget, guys, we actually have two podcasts. I forgot to mention that earlier. When you guys went on your phone to sign up for Serious Sellers Podcast, what I want everybody to do right now on whatever app you do that, go back to your phone right now and 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 type in AM. What's this called? Is that a slash <laughs> or whatever? AM slash PM. So just AM PM podcast. That's also another educational one where we talk more about off of Amazon, but very relevant to e-commerce. So again, AM PM podcast that's run by Tim Jordan, who we've referenced many times um, today. Now, uh, Marcus, here, here's a question here. You know, you, you, you have, you've had your own like uh, coaching program there in Germany for a while. Um, when you see your students doing product research, what would you say is a common mistake that you saw people do maybe before they, they, they join you or while you're coaching them, what kind of mistakes do you think they make? I think you're muted, but make sure to unmute yourself. Yeah, I think this will work better. <laughs> Well, one thing I always notice is like um, sometimes new guys come up with the same ideas. That's because like some things always pops up a lot in black box that's hot right now. And these are like really trend products, new products. And when you use X-Ray and you scroll all the way to the right, you see this row listing creation date. And sometimes you notice everything on this search results is like from this year, just a few months old. And this is 
a sign of a trend product and a sign like everyone will see this product right now. This is like a ma major red flag. Excellent, excellent. Now raise your hand who wants to answer this one. How can Tanya see what the competition is selling? Anybody? What tool? I'll go ahead. Uh, I always use X-Ray, which is the on the Chrome extension. You can pull that and it'll show you how many sales your competitors are making, how many units sold, the revenue, all, all that great information. Yep. Excellent. Uh, another hand raise uh, moment or just unmute yourself. The best way to boost seller feedback on Amazon. So how can we use Helium 10 in order to, um, to reach out to customers to leave either a product review or seller feedback? Anybody can just unmute themselves. You and, can and, use the okay. follow-up tool. That's really helpful and do the re request a review tool that's automated. That helps you get better seller feedback and product reviews. So it's kind of a two-in-one uh, feature. Yep. There. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, follow-up. If you guys, I mean, everybody who signed up for this, this deal that we have, you guys all have access to that, to follow-up. Uh, it's no extra charge. So it's a great way. Um, just FYI, you, maybe some of you guys are wondering, well, why is this guy asking about feedback who cares about feedback what we care about is product reviews but when you're selling like arbitrage or drop shipping or wholesale or a lot of fulfilled by merchant the thing that you're more concerned about is actually uh seller feedback not product reviews so so follow-up helps with both of those um let's see here all right who wants to take this what's the best tool to use to to help them with ppc Everybody should I, answer this one here. I am going to Go say ahead. Atomic. Atomic. atomic um, yes. It's yeah, it's a, such an easy tool to use, and it also pull, pulls in data from years ago, right? So you can make better decisions with all of the information because sometimes you you see in the advertising uh, a tab inside of Amazon that you can only see you know for the past sixty or ninety days, but here in Atomic we have record of of your PPC performance. Excellent, excellent. All right. Um, when you scaled your Amazon business, what inventory management? So we talk about, we're talking about product research and then you buy your first inventory, right? Well, you can't just like set it and forget it. You've got to like be looking uh, at your next orders and then kind of manage that with, uh, you know, not running out of your first one. So I'll tell you right now, like when I first started helium 10, didn't have anything for inventory management. So I was just using Microsoft Excel or, or best guess. And that's why if you look at the history of the coffin shelf, it was always running out of stock because, that's not a great way to manage your inventory. So now I use the Helium 10 inventory management system, which again, everybody on this uh, who signs up for this plan has full access to. Carlos says, I'm 43. You guys looking so young. Am I too late on Amazon e-commerce? Well, Carlos, uh, let me just say you are not, you are not um, older than me. So no, there is no, uh, you are not too late. Uh, what, what, what do you think, um, Leilama? Like should... Is there an age limit? Like you have to be a minimum age or a maximum age to get selling on Amazon? No, not at all. I mean, it's never too late. I'm, I'm trying to get my dad on to selling on Amazon. So I'm sure you're good. <laughs> I love it. Um, maybe Lonnie in the, in the background can, can mention this. Don't we have like a, uh, a swag website? Actually, this is like this one you can't buy. Like it's very embarrassing, but my skull size is ridiculous. Like it's, I have, you can't really tell on video, but I have an abnormal skull size. So like none of the regular Helium 10 hats fit me. They had to special make this one for me, but don't we have a something Lonnie that, that people, isn't there a website, you know, if you can throw it in the chat or something like, I swear there's like a swag website that we have where we can, we can buy that stuff. So Lonnie is going to put that in chat if there is a, a such thing. Um, by the way, I'm supposed to be in a meeting with Cassandra right now. Cassandra, if you're watching this on the comments, I'm sorry I'm late to your meeting, but these people are, are more important. We got we got to get these questions answered here. <laughs> um, let's see. if we, Do we discard a test listing if we can't bring more? 100% of the time, you discard the test listing. Remember, remember, the test listing you make kind of like, and you, you would see this when you look at that Project X episode, but you don't make it with great pictures. And and you're doing fulfilled by merchants. Sometimes you might get a couple bad reviews, and the price is like way high. And then you waste your what's called your honeymoon period on Amazon. So the test listing is only for the test. You'll never use it again. How to bring your product to the first second page on Amazon without reviews? What's the three letter word that is the answer to this question? 
and it's the search same logic. Buy. Not search find buy could definitely work. I use search find, but that's how people do it. If people search your product, they find it and then they buy it. Absolutely. That's what happens on Amazon every single day. So that's one three letter word that actually can help boost it. But how can people, what's another three letter word to even help people to search, find, and buy your product? Ads. Ad oh, PPC. Y'all PPC. <laughs> yeah, just like, just messing with me. I didn't even realize that that was, uh, that was a three letter word. You're, you're absolutely right, Lem. Uh, Lem, uh, that's another three letter word that can help you to get your product looking is, is Lem. You know, you can reach out to him and L-E-M. There you go. L -E -M. There you go. Um, all right. Let's see. Chantal says, my husband is 54. I'm 45 and our business is under two years. Hey, um, Carlos, you can start today and you would be in Chantal's um, shoes from two years ago. That's awesome. Um, Feel the Peace says, when doing keyword search using Magnet, do I have to worry about the negative percentage on, on search volume? Who, who, who is doing the search volume? That was you, Adriana, right? About like, she, you talked about, hey, look for ones that are going up, but just because it's going down, does that mean that, oh, no, this is a terrible keyword? Not necessarily. You have to factor in um, things such as seasonality. Perhaps you're looking at something, uh, uh, let's say, a product that is related to pool maintenance, right? Or anything that's related to the summer. And so you might see a downward trend in that, but that doesn't mean uh, that you should ignore that, that product. You should perhaps start planning uh, to have, if you want to get into that niche, to start launching launching perhaps by spring uh but yeah no the short answer is no uh you have to factor in seasonality and just many other factors that might be might be affecting the sales trend online arbitrage is it in line with amazon terms of service you have to be careful about this like for example you really got to understand the, the terms of service like you cannot drop ship or or do uh, you know send products that come in like other websites packaging in other words, like maybe I want to buy something from Best Buy and sell it on Amazon and I drop ship it. You can't have Best Buy on the package. There's a lot of rules that you got to make sure, but there's still people making millions, millions of dollars on Amazon using drop shipping and arbitrage and are totally fine. But it's because they really understand the terms of service and make sure that they are not breaking it. Um, let's see. Koneski says, for selling in Europe, can you fulfill with U.S. Amazon inventory or do you have to ship to Amazon warehouses in Europe first? Marcus, can you help uh, with this? Yeah, you definitely want to uh, ship to local European warehouses. Okay, excellent. Hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah, Sean, Sean says there's a seven-year-old who sells. On, you guys, I saw the most ridiculous video in the history of the world where there's um, this seven-year-old who did like, a YouTube video about how to use Helium 10. And, and he has a, a British accent, so that just makes it even more clear. He's like, and then I like to use the Amazon opportunity. I, I was just like, my mind was blown. You guys, I'm going to have to put that back on my Instagram. Now, it is on my Instagram. So, guys, look on my H10 Bradley Instagram and, and look where I said, hey, this is the most amazing thing ever. It was like probably like two weeks ago. Check out that. So if a seven-year-old can do it, guys, you definitely uh, can do it. Um, last one, um, Shivali. Black box searches. So we have like 17 billion filters in there. What are some of the common ones that you're using when you do uh, black box uh, searches? Wait, Shivali is frozen. Uh, well, opportunity Here. really. <laughs> it, no, I was muted for a second, so I was trying to get that get that unmuted. But uh, no, opportunity really depends on the person that's searching things up. Depends on your budget. Uh, so if let's say you have a heftier budget that you're willing to invest, then maybe your price point that you are taking a look at would be higher. But as Leilama mentioned earlier in this webinar, you know, she, she goes for 20 to 70. So it's really relative for you. What parameters do you want to be using? And that's why we have so many advanced features. So that way you can really pinpoint what you want. Shiva, I just want to say how much I hate you right now. You know, you know what, when my screen is frozen, or, or, or something happens, you'll just see me with this, like, you know, like this, like terrible look, like all of us. And then Shivali is just there with these Instagram looks just complete, like, like complete, like, oh my goodness. I, I guess if you're a pageant, you even can get frozen screenshots uh, looking not like your four face is not distorted like the rest of us here. Uh, Amelia says, what is Lamb? No, I was talking about Lem over here that he, 
His name is Lem, and he can help with uh, uh, we're confusing people with the Amazon strategies here. <laughs> I love it here. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, last question of the day, and anybody can answer this. What does organic mean in keyword search? So when we see organic, that organic word, when we talk about it, or we see it in like magnet or cerebro, um, who can help me understand what that is? Or who can not help me? Who can help Annalyn? Carrie, we haven't heard from you in a while. All right. Yeah. So basically when you go and you search on Amazon for a product, maybe you search for a garlic press, um, a bunch of different results come up. Um, at the very top, there's some different things that say sponsored. Those are actually ads. But right below that is actually, um, there are some products that don't say sponsored. And those are actually just on the page organically because people are buying them and they're pretty popular, you usually have the right keywords. So organically, it just shows up. Uh, without any ads or anything like that it's on the page on the search that you're you're searching yes well you guys just missed it shivali had the normal frozen <laughs> she was just doing it right now i don't think she could take it so she she, she got kicked off her hair obviously is messed up but anyways thank you guys uh so much uh for joining us today mm -hmm. on this uh webinar thank you to um these seven i think there's a seven of us here who came on giving your best strategy we appreciate it thank you to all those who attended and thanks to the people in the background making this uh event happen don't forget guys um through the end of tomorrow like you might be watching this on a replay like two months from now or something so you can go to this link and i'm not sure if this discount will be good but those bonuses that we mentioned like you know the the discount off of FOP or the discount from marketing by by emma and that special workshop with me those are only good through uh i can guarantee that through the end of tomorrow all right if you're watching this three weeks from now i'm sorry but you're not going to be able to get into those uh special bonuses this is just a one-time offer here for everybody so again helium10.com forward slash research 50 to take advantage of that um this is just one of the many different ways guys that we love to educate and train you on Amazon. We want you to be as successful as possible. We've got, you know, six people here who have all had success on Amazon. We want you guys to have that same success. So keep on crushing it and we'll see you guys next time.